Arsenal's title challenge has suddenly fallen into question. And it's our job here to talk about the reasons as to reasons why we think why. I've used the word reasons several times there. But that is the main kind of key thing behind today's show. Is, is trying to get an explanation for the reasons why you think this has happened. To get your thoughts on what needs to happen next. How this changes. How we rescue it. Which is kind of mad thinking about a team in second place. Two points off the lead. And what obviously needs to happen in the Champions League as well. This is the Arsenal phone-in show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Tour. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal phone-in show. The show in which we give you, the listener, the opportunity to come on to the channel and give your thoughts on a topic of our choosing today, of course, in the fallout of the game against Aston Villa. We're discussing Arsenal's situation. We're discussing what went wrong. We're discussing what you think needs to change or why it needs to change. And we're discussing and getting your thoughts on, on how we make it happen. Um, if you would like to join the phone and show, there are a number of rules we need to go through first. Of course, you need to have uh, a good internet connection, first of all. I mean, the first thing is you need to be over the age of 18 uh, for child protection reasons. And uh, you need to have a webcam so I can, of course, gauge whether I think you are indeed over the threshold to join us on the show. Uh, the link to do so is in today's uh, chat box as we are live. It's also down in the link description. To get the best results on StreamYards, I recommend downloading the StreamYard app um, and then opening the link up on your Safari if you're using an iPhone or something like that because it does automatically or should at least give you the option with a prompt to use the StreamYard app, which can be very good. I can already see a couple of people joining us, so I imagine this might be a bit of a busy one. Um, so if you want to get on, I'd get in quick would be my recommendation. But uh, we'll be trying to go for the next hour and a half to two hours or so uh, to talk about this. So hopefully we'll get as many people on as we can. We're going to start off with whoever was first on, and it was two very quick people. But Abdul managed to get in first, so we're going to get on Abdul first. Abdul, how are you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Hey, Tom, how are you? Very good, mate. Very good. Um, I, I say very good. I could be better is probably the answer to the question, especially after yesterday's results. Yeah. Tell me how you're feeling. Yeah. Um, honestly, I closed yesterday's game after, after the first half because I kind of felt it coming. <laughs> um, Why did you feel it coming? Because I know a lot of people felt very apprehensive before yesterday's game. Yeah, I mean, no. So I felt it coming after the way... Okay, so initially when when we hit first place when liverpool mm. blew it and then we and then we were top of the league that made me worried because whenever we're at the top of the league we always screw it up it's always like that. we always screw it up you mean in uh, the always. one time we've been there <laughs> uh, no no so not not we, we, we've had it multiple times we had it last season we've had it this season multiple times too where we were first well not a couple, couple times we were first and then we kind of messed it up then we went back the right. back down and then we we're back up again now we went back back, back down again it's um and uh i think that's that was kind of my initial worry but honestly this time i felt more confident when, when we were first i'm like okay we only got like um those eight games left we're gonna go in finish them done and like we like the, the titles in our hands i honestly felt like it was to be honest i felt like we definitely had it um i'm not saying it's it's away from our hands right now but it's really yeah. really hard for Man city to drop any more games it's it's really hard to even, even draw a game like it's it's interesting when you say like you felt like we definitely had it because that would i'm assuming that you, you must have thought arsenal would win every single one of the remaining seven games then well, yeah the, the with, with, with the form that we were on the way that mm. the players were playing um it just made sense to me but i guess um the issue is that the change in the in the lineup kind of um, screwed things up because you just ruined the entire form that we had. You know what I mean? Like we had a form with our starting eleven. Right. Um, as much as I um, was not happy with Havertz at the beginning of the year um, of the mm -hmm. league, um, mm -hmm. later on in the league, he was he he was the one scoring these goals. Sure. He like he was the one who, when we needed it the most, he would end up putting it through 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 the net. Um. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel right now. I'm, um, I'm a bit upset. Uh, I, I still feel like, um, now that we're not top of the league, we're, we're going to be back in our form again. And, um, if Manchester City just slips once, hmm. I think that's that's ours for the taking. Uh, but again, yeah. um, 
every year. The toughest run of the three. Yeah. It's also yeah. awkward. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. But I mean, I mean, again, with the form that we had, I wasn't worried. You know what I mean? I honestly wasn't worried. I felt I felt like mm. we. We definitely like with the form that we were playing. We 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 were gonna smash any team in front of us. I, not to mention like Aston Villa was playing at like our like at at the Emirates. Like we've like like come on, like you know, like we shouldn't we shouldn't have lost this today. It's 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 clear as day we shouldn't. We had Let chances. Me... We we didn't take we didn't take advantage of, of those chances. Yep. Um, and, and and again, I feel like it just there there was no need to change. Starting well, that. let me talk to you about that because you said that Arteta made changes which screwed everything up, right? Now, mm -hmm. would you agree that the first half performance was good? Well, it was. It was the problem is is that we can say it's good, but I mean, what does good give you when we're not taking our chances? Well, you know what, I mean? what that means is that when you, the performance is good but you're not finishing, it means that whatever we've set up, the selection that we've chosen, how we've gone into the game, was obviously right. And in the second half, obviously, is where things started to to go awry. And actually, I did a rewatch of the game today in preparation for this cause, well, to get better equipped to to think back to what happened. And actually, like it's it's not the entirety of the second half that was an issue. We actually approached the second half from the start pretty well. You know, we are still the team that are more dominant at the start of the second half as we were throughout mm -hmm. the first half. We create chances. Jesus had that penalty instant, which obviously I don't think is is a penalty and was rightly not given. Trossard has a chance. Rice has a chance. Jesus has an opportunity, which sandwiches the Tielemans opportunity. And it was then that moment where Odegaard got that kick in the chest from Watkins and went down where things then completely switched. So I don't necessarily buy into the whole... Emery changed no, no. things at half time. Um, it completely changed the game, and I don't buy oh, into no, no. the argument oh. that we changed things too much with the lineup at the start, and that's why we didn't win. Listen, because Tom, actually, we had a very good first half. Sometimes, as a coach, you take the risk, and it, and and in this case, it paid off for Emery. That's that's literally all that happened. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just that's he, he took the risk. It it that one moment worked for him. They scored that goal, and then uh, uh, after that goal, everything went like. Every, like everything went crashing in front of the players' eyes, um, mm. but that's 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 not my, what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about more about even Trussard was doing really well coming off the bench. There was no need for us to. to, to I know we want to rest players, but like we we we've, we've like we're so close to the end of the league. Like it, you know what I mean? Like it's is really now the best time to kind of uh, rest players. And I don't know whether Martinelli was um, was was still not feeling 100 percent or not i mean um if he if like i i would have had him play as well um mm. to be honest in there i would i would i would have had him started uh to start the match um and then i, I would have where start, you, come I understand where you're coming from the, the issue i've got abdul is with the whole like what we would have done differently with the benefit of hindsight for the starting 11 is after you i see don't the match, you know I, I after i've seen the game i don't think the starting 11 was wrong you know i think actually the reason why we didn't win this game is because of what we didn't do in the second half we didn't bring zinchenko off soon enough we didn't try and change our midfield structure to be more dominant we didn't go for it in the second half enough with the players that we had available to us and ultimately we didn't react well enough the way in which um Aston Villa started to press it. So, yeah, so I, but I think it's not for me about who started, it's about who didn't get brought on and when they didn't get brought on in the second half. But I mean, Tom, you can't help like I I, I can tell you now when I saw the first starting lineup, I was I, I was a little bit worried because I was like, mm. there was no need, there was no need to change it up. It was just there, there was just no need. And as, on Wednesday, as, do we not need to? Yeah. We were tired. I spoke to Ollie Watkins after the game, and he told me that he felt like they had more legs than us. He felt like they had more to give than us. And I don't disagree with him. So we talk about the fact we didn't need to change things, but this team is is getting to the point where we're we're nearly burnt out. So but sure, here, let, let me. Let, uh, so Tom, okay, let's let let, let let me put it out this way, right? It's, sure. I mean, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Manchester City is a team. That is built to win the league, no matter what. That's why they've been winning it yeah. consistently across the board over Liverpool. Yep. And yep. by that, I mean they have fresh legs for days. Mm -hmm. If any player gets injured, they have a replacement. Even when Kevin De Bruyne got, got injured, Foden stepped up. They got they mm -hmm. they they have the players, the fresh legs, all that stuff. They 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 have it. No Agreed. other team has this. Liverpool doesn't have it. Arsenal don't have this. Great. And 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 the one time where Liverpool were, were were able to sneak that league title away from Manchester City is because 
their starting 11 kept playing towards mm. the end of their games. And there was they a little heat, thing called yeah. COVID as well. And there was <laughs> also COVID as well, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. I still think that they were still able to do it by him not resting any of his players towards the end. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that is the right way to do it, but that's how but that's how they were able to do it. And then the following year, their players got injured. Everything went down the drain for them. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and 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 it could be as a result of the previous year where previous year where they where he really he really had them like work for it. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's um like the players should have started that. Like we shouldn't we shouldn't have changed our lineup. Is what I'm trying to say. It should our lineup should have stayed consistent. The only change I would have yeah. done was I would have had Martinelli in there and I would have had Trussard come off the bench. That's what I would have done. And then mm. if Kai Havertz wasn't wasn't putting it through through the nets, that's when I would have put um Jesus in. That uh, that's again, I'm just now it's easy to talk about this after the match is over. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, I actually but, say you can't. last last couple of thoughts, by the way, mate, because I've got like yeah, so yeah, many no, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, sure. man. It's all uh, good. Uh, so oh, yeah. oh no, oh, oh, all I want to say is the initial start lineup for me was a question mark. Now, whether we played good or not, we, we we did, but at the same time, we were not taking our chances. Now, whether this is up to the players or not, that's um, for the people, that's for the coach to determine, honestly, not, not, not yeah. for us. It's for the coach to determine, and that's for Arteta's learning experience. This is all for him to learn. He's still young. He's still learning. I'm not, I mean, at this point, honestly. That's not um, going to foray many people's uh, worries. Uh, but, um, uh, I right, at this point, I am okay with it. Even if we get second place, third place, I think he's the man to go forward. He's, he mm. just needs to gain the experience. I, all I want from him is to learn from these experiences and mm. to grow as a manager. That's that's what's really important here. And um, even if we don't win the title this year, there are still so many years under under him to go if he does mm. succeed. And um, what I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm hoping for is that in the summer we start realizing what we really need. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And, yeah. And they need. And honestly, they need to pay up. I mean, Rice is the biggest example of they 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 well, paid up. They have been paying up. You know, they paid. Yeah. I, I, a record fee for a player yeah. they paid more than they've ever paid for a summer last summer well, yeah so like again um and, and 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 that's proof that when you made the payment for the player that you wanted that you believe fits your system mm. succeeded so you know what i mean so yeah. my 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 hope is that we we go aggressively in the off season and we go aggressively after a striker just a, a striker through and through we got to you know what one. I mean? <laughs> that's that's uh, the we, job. We, there, we, we just we will find one if we can mm. if we can be aggressive, aggressive, pay, be beat the competition, demand the players to um like don't give any the players any other options. Just go aggressively, give it to him, and be like, hey, listen, this is what we're offering you. This is what we want. This is what this mm. is what our, our expectation. Uh, easier said than done but if you're aggressive enough and even more aggressive than the rice deal just being aggressive get because i think i think i genuinely think all we need is just a genuine genuine striker through and through i think it's key um, to the team i think that the midfielders as well i think the wide areas are too but abdul i'm gonna have to cut you off yeah. there i'm afraid mate I'm all right, man. Gonna, all right. Gonna, very, very generous with the time right. you, but i appreciate <laughs> your time as always thanks Tom. <laughs> all right yeah i'll speak to you soon Thanks, Abdul. Um, yeah, just on that, like we've obviously, as I mentioned before, we've got a lot of listeners now tuning in and calling up. We're going to get to the point where the queue is going to get uh, it's going to get full. It does actually get full, believe it or not. But we're going to rattle through some from speakers. So sorry if I do cut people off at any points throughout this, but I, I want to try and get as many people on as we can to get their thoughts. Advertus, uh, camera is next. Uh, how you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Uh, Tom's still hanging in. It's still getting helpful. I can hear you. For the best. I can hear you. Tell me what went wrong and how do we fix it? Yeah, before I proceed, Tom, let me say thank you for everything you do every day. I know it's not easy waking up early in the morning to do what you do. So I will give you kudos to that and thank you and keep up the good job, brother. Thank you, man. Yeah, well, I mean, Tom, it's just been a, since yesterday, it's just been a devastating day. And I just hope the team can regroup and see how we can get a win um, on Wednesday to boost the morale going far in the league. But I'm so damn hard there because I really ready to be friend friend and we expect all to lose to Aston Villa. If we were losing to our, our rival like Tottenham, maybe or Menu or Chelsea, I would say, okay, you no, know, those are our rival, but not team like Aston Villa. And that has been our bigger issue. We lose to a team that we're really not supposed to be losing to. 
and that's mm -hmm. why kill us today but at the end of the day it's four boys epl you expect it unpredictable so you gotta get prepared but to just go into the topic i mean like like i do say when i saw the lineup yesterday i mean i got fitting every player but there was no reason to tweet that lineup the way for putting harvest in the in the in the middle do you not think, yeah, camera? That there's an argument that, as I said, and I mentioned on with Abdul, like we've got Bayern on Wednesday, and I think there's going to be changes to that team, and there was changes obviously made from the team that played Bayern as well. The team looked tired at the end of the game, and so we're saying there's not reason to change things, but is there arguably a reason to change things because we've and and are looking tired? So that's why he's made some changes. Yeah, like I said, the coach has confidence in all the players and expect them to they all play on the same level. We, but we, we expect to look at it from a different point of view. I think that's where the problem is coming from. It's not lining up. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he knows what he's doing. But if you look at what I was saying, Liverpool title winning team at that time of the season, seven, eight, nine game left, you want to keep the core value of players together. I know sometimes they get tired, but it's just to motivate them after the if you start like the, the last game, the team that will have you started with that same team, and you know, after 75 minutes, people are tired, you bring in the fresh legs. That way, you got the bench. You got, and right now, we are we got, apart from team, but all our players are actually available. So, we should really have a strong bench that will come in 15 20 minutes in the game and make that impact or to hold on to our lead. You know, but the game was, I mean, that tweet or that, I mean, the coach know best than us. We just spent those speaking from a that point of view. But I felt that tweeting that team, I wasn't satisfied, but I go there to support my team. I don't want to go the negative mindset and say, oh, be granted the other, oh, why you change your team? I want to see at the end of the result. So this is what we're doing right now. I'm going to complain at the end of the game, but not during the game or before the game, because I want to have that faith in the player that I think they can do the job. But I think when I, it did not go our way, so we have to regroup, encourage them, and motivate them, and see how we can do best the next game. And at the end of the day, we, we shot ourselves in the foot because we had so many chances. To, that fight has should have been three, two to three zero already for going going off, but we kill ourselves. So like, like you said, they had two chances, or they had four chances. They missed two. They took two, and those goals they score, we just give it to them. If you, if you, I just, like you said, you watch the game over, you like if you watch it over, you just, we just gave the goals to them. We just gave the goals to them, and they took it. So that's where we are right now. But putting city that. on time, yeah, we've done that multiple times this season as well. You know, exactly. not not as much as we used to. You know, there's something to be said about the fact that sadly we did hand away. But in the last two games against Villa and against Bayern Munich, there has been something of a naivety of that high line. You know, being caught in behind against Sané gave that penalty away. Mm -hmm. We've been caught in behind against Watkins. You know, gave that goal away. There's something there. There's something that maybe we're not adapting to. Is that because we've got a young defence? Perhaps. Maybe that's the reason. They're not reacting to it. But then Arteta should recognise that, absolutely. But we've had and, and been very good defence. This this record this season, you know, last season, one of the best, you know, goal differences mm -hmm. in terms of kind of the goals scored more than we've ever scored before. We conceded exactly. um, uh, 43 goals. This season, we've currently conceded 26 like that shows you the yeah. difference between this season. And we just considered two, obviously, at the weekend. So it was 24 before this weekend. And I think a lot of people would have expected yeah. us not to concede right. any again. Just yeah. just very quickly, Cameron, before I jump onto the next caller, against Bayern, are you worried that there's going to be any kind of hangover from this result? Uh, I don't think for me, yeah, right now they are more motivated to go into Bayern. And for me, to be frank with you, Tom, I feel with me myself on the time, uh, like I know in the camera we're losing your connection ready I don't know what's from. but you're you're cutting out on us can you get me the, barely I, 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 we managed to get most of the no. first answers but you're, you're cutting out on me i'm really sorry we did hear the first the first couple of answers but uh i'll have to shoot thank you so much for your very kind words no, earlier on, which no, I did no, hear. thank you Thank you. Just about heard that. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Um, massive thank you to Cameron uh, for coming on. Very dedicated listener and someone who leaves some very kind comments, as you saw just there. So massive appreciation. Uh, let's bring on Ghost Bella uh, to the conversation. Uh, how are you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And how are you? Tom? Out and about, are we? Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm just taking a walk. Um, I thought just, about... Just letting off some and... steam, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> letting off some steam, you know. I, I'm, I've been trying to reconnect from all of this because... I think, Tom, as I said from a, for a long time ago, I said that 
if Arteta doesn't win anything this season, mm. he, he, he needs to go. It's in a respectful way. What he has done for us is great, but I think that, to be honest, now I've seen it too many times, and, 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 and I, I can see also people get affected by this, you know? He could, people mm. get affected by us losing. Mm. And if it happens, Which they so haven't been affected times. too many times this season, then have they? Because we haven't lost oh, no, too many no, games. No, no, no. Of course, of course. I'm, 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 I'm just telling you that we have done great. But the thing is, it seems like there is something there that he, he, for five years he, he hasn't. At the end of the season, he, he hasn't um, been able to tweak it. So for me, I, I think that at the end of the season, I'm sorry, but he needs to go. He needs to go in a respectful way. He needs to go in and who are you bringing in? And, and for me, who I would bring in, there is two people. I would rather bring in Inzaghi, or I would Inzaghi. bring in uh, yeah Inzaghi, because for example, we saw in the Champions League final, he competed with uh, Man City, and if he can co- at least compete with Man City, that's also give me yeah he lost, but he competed. He, he he made them only. What did they do in the Champions goal. League this season? I don't know. I don't think they're in the quarterfinals with us this season. Are they? No, but at least they're win- they're going to win the league. They're, so you need to look at it in two ways, you, you know, Tom. So for me, mm. I I, uh, I think Arteta. If uh, I I for me, I give him to Wednesday. If we go out on Wednesday, you give him to Wednesday. So if we go out to yeah. Bayern, he's gone. No, I said. Let me let me just finish my point. I said that. <laughs> Wednesday, I will give him a chance. If, if we go out, and then I will give him to full stop on 19th of May. So if we don't win anything at the end of the season, I'm sorry, he needs to go. And, and let me touch upon the match a little bit. Um, you, you said the team was tired. Yes, the team was tired. I, I didn't but say I the think... team was tired. I said Dolly Watkins said the team was tired. No, no, okay. Yeah, okay. But, but, but the team was tired, okay? And we, we could see that also. But also what Ateta needs to know is if the team is tired, then you, you, re- you replace the team man for man. For example, we all knew in the beginning of the season that Havertz should never be in, in, the, in the midfield. He should always be as a striker. I, I, I think a lot of people actually said that he should be sold a few weeks into the season rather yeah, yeah, than yeah, as yeah. a striker. But I, I mean, <laughs> but I mean uh, in the end, you know, in the end, like November towards the, towards the, the, the new year. But the... Uh, when we when we started to win a lot of games, you know, uh, the, the new year this year. So I think that people said that, uh, that uh, Ateta should have put uh, Havertz as a striker. So for me, that that uh, him putting him it's it's a, in the midfield and putting Sinchenko at the back line for me that is kind of disrespecting to, uh, to 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 Aston Villa because we all know really that. What, £100 million pounds worth of players in two positions is a disrespectful to Aston Villa? No, but I think, I think that it, it is. Because if we look at Aston Villa, they are a really good counter-attacking team. And there is one place, always, if Sinchenko plays, they're always going to target Sinchenko. And maybe 90% of the time, Sinchenko gets caught out. Of course, he came in for Bayern. And he and he and he played really good, but yeah. but the thing is, we all know the flaws that Chinchenko has, and if we keep on using those flaws, this team, I'm sorry, but it, it will not progress as long as we think it's going to progress. Well, so it's only progressed. Me, to be fair, no, it's it's only progressed. It's only gone in one direction under Arteta, and that is forwards. So I, I I can't align there because the only evidence that I've got because we're better this season than we were last season. We're going closer to the league title. Yeah, than we, did we are last better. By, 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 by so if we're better, why would you sack him? That doesn't make sense no, no. to me. Imagine that you're at your job, right? You're in your. I don't know what you do for work, uh, Gaspella. I, I won't make any assumptions. I, 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 but if, I, I, imagine I, I, you're in your I, I, job, and every year you've got better. You've got better and better and better every single year. You've reached what they would. I think what the club would certainly suggest is is what they're looking for him to do. The only team that are outright beating you is the team that have got unlimited, near unlimited resources that have spent more than double what we've spent on their squad. And then at the end of that season, at the end of your work, you're being told that you're being sacked. Like <laughs> I can't get my head around it. No, 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 but Tom, results come with winning. If we're not winning the league, mm. which, which, which now at the end we were told 
if we just win seven games, I know it's 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 hard to say that we just need to win seven games. <laughs> yeah. But for five years, uh, 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 Tom, five years we have been under the pressure. How much more does Ateta need to learn? Remember, uh, we are a big club. Tom, we are. Well, really you tell big me. Club. You tell me, mate. You, you tell. Last question to you because obviously you've, you've mm. told us in Zaggy, and I've got other callers on, and I want, I've given you a lot of time. To be fair, um, yeah. you tell me. Our, what our test, you said, what does he still have to learn? And then you pointed to Inzaghi. You tell me, what is it that Inzaghi has that will let him, with this Arsenal team, beat Pep's Manchester City? Trophies. That is what he has. Trophies. That doesn't give me an answer, mate, because Arteta's but got how... trophies too. No, but he got one. That's the thing. He got, right, he got but... one. But Inzaghi right, has but won. again, and he, and you're he, talking and about someone that's got eliminated from the Champions League this season. He's not in the Champions League with Arteta this the season because they were the, eliminated. The difference is, Tom, you won the league. If yeah, we I, won need the to, league I need something. I need but, a characteristic. But, 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 I need a skill. But, I need something but, that you're telling me that he has that Arteta doesn't to convince me. And all you're telling me is trophies, which has, Arteta has also got. So I need but, something. But he got one. He, he, he got one. Again, you're so still he, telling me trophies. I need a characteristic. I need a trait. I need a skill. I he, need a he, system. He I need a philosophy. Okay. He has a philosophy that wins you trophies. What he is that philosophy, philosophy that won him trophies? Tell me, tell me about Inzaghi's philosophy that won him trophies with Inter. He, he plays with a winning mentality. Right. So Arteta doesn't play with a winning mentality. And let me say and let me say a thing. He doesn't crumble. In the stressing and the nervous, they're out of the Champions League. They crumbled in the Champions League. But they won. But they're going to win the league. Right, but you said you he does. Okay. He doesn't but, crumble, but, but he did no, crumble because okay. he's out of the Champions uh, Tom, League. <laughs> Tom, Tom, I have, Tom, I have a question for you. Go if for it. Win, if we win the Champions League this season, yeah, is this season the success? greatest achievement in Arsenal history, arguably? Mm. Yeah, it will be the greatest. And is it a, is it a success? A success? Say again. Sorry, I didn't quite catch it. Champions League and the league are the two biggest trophies you can win, aren't they? Yes, they are the two. Yes. In rankings of trophies, they would be one and two. Yes. Yes, of course. So, is Zaghi winning the league? Is it a failure? Oh, what? Serie A? Are you want to talk about Serie A and how it can... Do you think Serie A for Inter Milan is harder to win than the FA Cup was for Arteta to win in 2020? So do you think? So you're you're telling me Serie A is not? Oh no, I'm me. asking you a question. You have not given me an answer to it yet. No, no, no. But you're you're telling me that uh, uh, the Serie A is worse than the FA Cup, than the Premier is League, than the Premier League. Is it? Is it it's that you're telling me? Right, it's worse than the. It's not. I don't like the word worse, but I'd say it's not as hard of an achievement to win as the Premier League or the Champions League. I'd argue for Arsenal in 2020, it was harder for Arsenal to win the FA Cup in 2020 than it was for this Inter Milan side to win the Serie A this season, is what I would argue, How? yeah. How? How? We had an elite... Well, because strike, Arsenal huh? had to go and beat we Chelsea had... in the final and Manchester City in the semi-final. Yeah, yeah, well, this but, season in we, Serie A, but, Napoli, who won the league last season, are awful in comparison to that. But, I mean, but, Inter Milan is something like 14 points ahead because the other team but, simply... Have not... Bologna are fourth at the moment, which is a big... You know, Bologna, no disrespect but, but, but to Bologna, Bologna but they're no, no, fourth they are, in Serie A right yeah, now. Yeah, they're fourth, but, but they're good. Aren't they a right. good team? We say Brighton some good is good. Players. But Brighton, yeah. but, but, but we say Brighton is good, but, but Brighton is, uh, what, eighth or tenth? Something like that? Or sixth, Ninth, I'm sorry. I, I don't really remember. The, uh, five, fifth or something like that. We say they are good. But Brighton is 10th right well, now. Yeah, Brighton are 10th. And we say that they are a bogey team and a good team. So how can we not say that Bologna is a good team? Has, has I'm not Brighton... saying they aren't a good team. I'm just telling you what I think the context between the Italian league, with respect, because I don't particularly like the whole, oh, we shouldn't sign players because they come from this league. That's not what this is about. But I'd say mm. that you can't judge, you can't tell me that we should sign the guy that's currently winning the Serie A because he's won trophies without telling me anything about why we should have him as Arsenal manager, other than the fact that he's won trophies. No, I can also tell you, I said that he's got a winning mentality. That yeah, but wins you didn't tell me how. You, don't, you didn't tell me why that's different to what Arteta's got, because no, I think Arteta's but, got a winning mentality. Every time I hear he, him speak, all he talks about is trying to win things with Arsenal. Why is that not a winning mentality? You don't hear him. I said that Inzaghi has, uh, what, what do you call it? He doesn't crumble in those moments. He will change things. He will make sure to change things when 
the moment is right. The problem with uh, uh, um, uh, the Arteta, he has, he, he, he of course, has a big ego. So, of course, he would try to try to correct his uh, to correct his answer by himself. You understand what I mean? He he, he will try to correct really. the answer by not correcting the answer. Do, do you what understand what I mean? What system does he play, Inzaghi? Inzaghi what formation plays, uh, does he use? Uh, I think it's four three three, supposedly. No, it's three five. Uh, but but Ghost Miller, thank you for your time, mate. I really do appreciate yeah. it, and uh, yeah. I'm giving you plenty of time. So, but I appreciate yeah, yeah. you coming. Well, thank on. you, thank you for your time, Tom. It was nice, uh, nice coming on. I hope Likewise, we, we, uh, we can debate some else soon. So of course, always up for a debate. But I've got other callers yeah. I've got to give time to as well. But thank you, mate. Yes. Thanks, Mal. Speak to you soon. Uh, let's jump to. Uh, let me check my list because I did have a list of uh, who was up. It was Ghost Miller, Tom. And then uh, it was Tom next, but Tom. Oh, there he is. Tom's on my screen. There he is. How you doing, Tom? Good, Joel. Good, Tom. Um, really, really enjoying the show and, and especially the last caller, which, by the way, um, regarding this Inzaghi win trophies, he has, I think, two titles with. With uh, in his career, or maybe three, which includes oh, one title with that. Inter he's and got... one cup with Lazio. I'll check it. He's got three not Italian not... cups. He's got. I don't know if this is the manager. I assume it is. Two, five Italian Super Cups. He's got two Coppa Italia really? Primavera winners, and he's got one Italian Super Cup winner. Has he got a Serie A? Surely he's got a Serie A. Is this not his first Serie A? No, he got the Serie A with Inter. Season? Yeah, last season he won with Inter. The no, last season was Napoli, wasn't it? Ah, sorry. Two years before prior, there after after Conte won it, he won it once with uh, manager. With he, uh, am I even looking at the right in Zaggy? <laughs> I think yeah. You... Um, it's not. It's Simone in Zaggy we're looking at, isn't it? Because his brother is yeah, uh, yeah. It's Felipe. Simone. It's not. It's not. It's not Felipe. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's fine. Anyway, I was on the right page because I was saying last season. I'm just trying to think how many how many trophies he's got. Manager is one. Uh, he has not won the Serie A. Um, he has won the Coppa Italia in 1819. He's won the Coppa Italia. That was with Lazio. He won the Coppa Italia with yeah, yeah. Inter in 22. I know, I, I know he won one cup with Lazio, and that's it, I mm. think. So he's never won the league. Not won the yeah, league. Well, he will win the league this, this season. season. They yeah. will win the league this so, season, yeah. But so by so by comparison, Arteta and I mean it's not uh, it's not yet, but they're on the same number of titles, pretty much. So <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, done, that, so that, sure. that's so that's comparison was pretty 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 uh, pretty interesting. Well, too. yeah, you know, I, yeah, when you when you're asking yeah. somebody why they want to sign somebody and you ask them what formation they play and they, they give you the wrong one it's it's a struggle yeah but um yeah so anyway moving away from Inzaki, uh what went wrong and how do we fix it it's it's hard to say it's because as as you said and i think a lot of people i i don't know why people go so crazy first of all i don't understand why people go so crazy on on Arteta's starting lineup it was i think it was pretty good uh the first half i mean we had so many chances. If if you include the the a Trosa chance, the number of times actually, I think that Havertz in the middle field was quite interesting and actually quite good because the number of times he he was managed to break the line as a second striker and, and beat the beat the high line and get into a one on one chances. Yeah. And if you would, I mean, you know, in in any other day he puts one in and and this conversation is is completely different sure so it's it's really hard so i don't see any reason any problem with the first team i think jesus has to get some minutes especially coming up if we want him to start against Bayern munich i think trossard showed he deserved the first you know uh, especially after his cameo against Bayern Munich, i think he does deserve and i think martinelli does need a bit of rest you know a bit of mixing up Saka was good. So uh, the the only thing I can look at is, and you know, we, we talk about this uh, a bit of game management. This is probably the only thing I can point out as, as something that went wrong a bit. And mm. because I think, first of all, I think that Arteta should have had Partey on instead of Jorginho. Yeah. 
I agree. Um, I think I think Jorginho, as much as he's good on, on the ball and that, but the way that they were playing at the moment, you know, they had Morgan in, in, as the number ten. They had fast players there. They had the uh, they had Bailey and then Diaby. I don't think it was really suited for him, especially as, uh, uh, after Odegaard left uh, the pitch. So I think uh, Party should have started. And after that, maybe I I don't think Jesus uh, put taking out Jesus was the right call as well. You know, adding especially changing the format because I I think. Changing the formation as putting Harvard in front and, and putting, um, I, I would love to see Jesus and Harvard still on together and, and, and maybe change the middle field um, in a different setup. I think Partey, I, I would like to see Partey, Rice and, and Smith Rowe in, in, in the middle together and um, maybe, maybe. I mean, I would have maybe take off Jesus, uh, put Jesus on the flank because I think his he was okay. I think his his movement was 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 good, and I don't think that I know that Martinelli off the bench has a couple of cameos, good cameos. I mean, you can take the Crystal Palace, but I don't think in general he has good cameos from the bench. Uh, in compared to Trossa, the Jesus, I don't think he, you know. I would agree. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think Jesus is is better from um, a starting position than necessarily come off the bench. Tom, the only reason I'm going to move on because there's there's a lot of background noise, um, <laughs> which I imagine is your little uh, ones in the background. So I appreciate yeah, that. Sorry. Um, but uh, I, I, we got. I mean, I, I can... No, it's okay, mate. We got move, a lot of your points across. I think you raised some really good ones. Um, but uh, okay. yeah, I, I was just going to move on because of that. But I really appreciate your time, Tom, and I think you raised some really important points. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Always Bye. a pleasure, mate. Uh, Massive appreciate Tom for jumping on. And, and I, you know, I think it's a point you know, about Jesus. It's an interesting, wasn't it? Because as a starter, you know, he probably has the most impact. That said, he came on as a starter. He came on as a sub against Bayern, and actually, I thought had quite a decent impact in that game. So that's something to be said. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people um, that are jumping on, and it's coming up with a lot of notifications saying uh, the uh, the queue is full. So once you're uh, once you've finished talking on the show, please make sure you back out so you can let other people. Know. Otherwise, I will awkwardly have to kick you out, which is it, I never want to do, but I kind of have to uh, <laughs> at certain times as well. Um, next up is Damien. Uh, Damien, how you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Uh, yeah, under the circumstances. You can be honest. You can tell me that it's, you're not. <laughs> well, I mean, to, to be honest, today sucked, to be quite honest. Today sucks. Since the, yeah, yeah, since the full-time whistle. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those that you try to process what's happened, what went wrong, and while also filtering out the noise from the things that really aren't worth listening to. You know, the Arteta out sound and all that sort of stuff that yeah. we it's lose. Always happen, mate. It's, it's always yeah, be I mean, it's, the thing is, that these people have been waiting four and a half, five months to be able to say Arteta out. I mean, oh, mate, I had people in my chat box this morning that I haven't seen in months. Names that I've not yeah. seen pop up in, you know, since the uh, since the Liverpool FA Cup game. That's the last time yeah. they were able to pop up. That's just, I don't know, it, people get a kick out of it. I don't know why, but they do. They, do. they, they, they just sit there waiting for that opportunity. But, you know, for me, I, I, I always say with Mikel, because kind of going back to the caller that was saying about Inzaghi as the next manager and all this sort of stuff, mm. I don't believe in condemning Inzaghi based on what formation he played, what philosophy no. he'd have, whatever else. No, because of course not. When we employed Arteta, we had we no had idea what his formation was going to be. We didn't know Absolutely. what his philosophy was going to be. We, we may have had an idea, but we mm -hmm. wouldn't have known. But at the same time, it also drives me mad when people say about they have a winning mentality. You know, mm. I'm sure when Spurs employed Conte, it was because he's got a history of winning trophies and we all know I how that know turned well. out. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, whether that's down to the manager, down to the club or a mixture of both, really, I couldn't care less. But, you know, either way, it didn't work out for them. But I think what one thing that drives me mad with Mikel is because with the, with the situation over the tiredness and the fatigue, which... I hate hearing, oh, we look tired, we look leggy and all this sort of stuff because mm. you have all season to manage your fitness. You know, Arteta has all season to ensure the players are fit throughout the season at the right times, especially when you get to the end of the season 
and all that sort of stuff. And overall, I think he's done a very good job. I've said before that I think a mistake he's learned this season from last is that last season it felt like we went all guns blazing, no pun intended, mm. um, right from the very start, you know, winning games in 15 minutes from the first game of the season. And then when it got towards the business end of the season, like now, we literally did run out of legs because we'd given everything in the first half of the season. Yeah. And, you know, throwing a World Cup in amongst all that as well obviously doesn't help with that kind of thing as well. Whereas this season, it's felt like the first half of the season, he's we've played more controlled. We've played with more, um, more focus on managing games. You know, mm. not necessarily managing the players that are in those games, but ensuring we're not going hell for leather for 90 minutes. Because for me, that's probably going to be Liverpool's undoing this season. Mm. It's because they've had to score 98th minute winners in 50% of their games yeah. this season. Yeah, it's it inevitable this... that they would drop points, more so yeah. than us, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, combine that with injuries, which everyone's had as well, you know, it's always mm. going to be a nightmare. But at the same time, you also have to manage the players' game time throughout the season. And that's where I think Mikel's biggest undoing is, is mm. that he's not managed that game time effectively enough. How do and you think he could have done it better? I, I just think there's certain... not. There's nothing that massively jumps out, but it's just at certain points in the season, okay. he could have just taken someone off after an hour. He could have. I, I, I point to the Sheffield United game. Like, yeah. you're 5 0 up. And I mm. said it on this morning's show, you're 5 0 up. And you don't need to risk anyone. You yeah. can, like, I'm sorry, but you can throw the kids on and we aren't, we aren't chucking a 5 0 yeah. lead. I mean, in that you know. game, you could, you could have made five substitutions at half time and it, yeah. it wouldn't have made because. Sheffield United were done and dusted by then anyway. You this, know, and this, it, it, this 2024, when we've been going on these games where we're scoring three, four, five in games, like I I think you're right. I don't think we manage them in terms of saving players that like we could have done as effectively as we could. And, and it's certainly something that we've already talked about before with Arteta is that his in-game management is it's something that he needs to look at. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, what, what frustrates me even more about that with Arteta is that he's come to Arsenal with Edu, Josh Cronke, whoever else, sure. has taken a massive risk in employing someone for a job that he has no qualifications for, really. He's Absolutely, got his coaching yeah. badges and whatever else, but he's not got a known formation. He's not got a known winning mentality. All this stuff people talk about, they couldn't give to Arteta, but someone's taken a risk on him. Mm. You know, maybe maybe Edu's completely and utterly gone to bat for him and said, look, this is on me. Give him the job because I believe in him that much. Whoever it is, someone's gone to town and backed Arteta to get him that job. Indeed. And then when he's here, you see with the likes of Smith Rowe and Vieira and Nelson and whatever else, how he doesn't trust them mm. to give them a chance in game. Oh, look, I see what you're saying. So you're saying he, he should show them more trust like the club showed him trust. Yeah. Yeah, because if it wasn't okay. for the trust that he got shown, he wouldn't be in the position he's in now, okay. you know. And Smith Rowe, Nelson, I don't think he's good enough for this level. And Vieira's shown once in a very blue moon that he might have something. But we all yeah. know what Smith Rowe can do once he's in his stride, once he's got confidence and whatever mm -hmm. else. And then we play him in, you know, a game or two ago where he, he's a man of the match performance. And then we don't see him again until the latter part of the game that we've just had. You know, and, and you look at that from Smith Rowe's perspective and you're thinking, how is that affecting his confidence that he can come in and do a man of the match for get told he's done really well and then he just doesn't get a look in. Yeah, you know, Nelson started that game against Luton, didn't he? And then there's not even been in the squad for a yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. and that's what frustrates me about Vieira being there as well. Like Vieira, yeah. I said it on this morning show, like Vieira is more stylistically similar to Erdegaard. So if yeah. Erdegaard goes off, don't bring on Smith Rowe, because I think Smith Rowe is more of a he plays with an Erdegaard rather than instead of an Erdegaard. Bring on Vieira, who you've spent 34 million pounds in. And then yeah. the response to that from some people is, well, you know, he's not really played many minutes, he's not fit. Well, then put Nelson on the bench because Nelson's <laughs> ready. Like Nelson and, will come on and play. And the thing is, if they're not being given minutes, then they're never going to have regular minutes. You know, Indeed. and you when, when you look at the like the team selection for yesterday, there is a part of me as well that thinks 
has Mikel been the victim of having a choice has been his biggest undoing, you know, because for so long he's he's played the same 11, the same right. squad of 15, 16 because of injuries and yeah. he's not really had much of a choice and whatever else because, you know, right. and I, I kind of look at it with Jesus and, you know, I, I always look at Jesus, I think out on the right or the left, you know, covering for Martinelli or Saka, I quite like Jesus in them positions because he's a little devil, you know, he, he's he's got the trickery, he can cause problems for opponents, he can confuse opponents. Once in a while, he might score a goal as well, you know, and, and also importantly, he gets back and helps out his wing back, you know, so that he does a lot in them positions. Whereas Havertz has been up top, he's been doing a great job for us up top. You know, everyone's been singing his praises. And then it's kind of like he's now looked at it and said, no, I don't want the guy that's scoring his goals up there. I want the one that even goes on TV and tells people you, that's not your strong point. Mm-hmm. And you you just kind of think, well, what, what are you doing? And for me, it is what it is taking it one game at a time. And you've got a team that's winning you games. Stick with that team. Make yeah. the changes in the second half. You know, I, I fully understand giving Kivior a rest because it, the amount he's played for game. Poland and, you know, yeah. he's been absolutely knackered. If he'd put Tommy Asso out there, I'd have had no issue with it at all. Hmm. But then... Oh, to be honest, Tommy Asso should have been on for Zinchenko in about, after about 50 to 55 minutes. Yeah. Like, it was but, so but obvious that Zinni was struggling, you know. And, and, and it's it, it feels like it's a blind spot that Mikel can't see round because he's always... He has this faith in Zinchenko yeah, that does. 90% of people just can't see where this faith comes from, you know. And don't get me wrong, I think when, when he first joined and when Zinchenko and Jesus first joined us, I think it was a really good signing because it was to get us back playing Champions League football, challenging for titles, all this sort of stuff. Now we've moved past that and I think we've moved past Zinchenko as well. Mm. And to be honest, the thing about Zinchenko is I think that Arteta in some ways knew that we were past Zinchenko Mm. because we spent £38 million on a player to be his successor in Yuri and Timber, who we've ultimately not had this season. And I think that has been has proven to be costly in the end because that's 38 million quid's worth of investment in a squad in the summer in a really important position that we've ultimately not had. Um, You know... We brought on Eddie Nketiah yesterday when we were one, we were going to bring him on. We were one nil down. He was waiting to come on, and then we went two nil down. And I'm looking yesterday at, at, at Liverpool. You know, I know they still lost the game, but they brought Zoboslai, Gakpo, Elliot, Jota, and Trent Alexander Arnold off the bench. You know, <laughs> to change things for them. Yeah. And that's the difference. And Liverpool are, are still a team that lack, in comparison to City, still lack depth. You know, yeah. in comparison to us. So, you know, changes are needed. Investment is still needed in the summer. And uh, and that's why I think, you know, to judge our terrorists, as we had from the earlier caller on Ghost Spiller saying, you know, if he doesn't win the league, he's got to go. I think it's unfair because you're judging him against a side like City still that have the resources that we simply haven't had, that they've invested double the amount we've invested in our squad into their squad. And they've got the best manager in the world, period. So that's what we're up against. And yeah, I just hope that and if, any, you know, if anyone has shown in, in the league, other than Klopp, that they can go up against him. It's it's Arteta, you know, mm. and what he's done. He's already beaten Pep and Klopp this season and gone unbeaten against both of them as well when playing away from home. So there's there's plenty of evidence there to move forward. Damien, it's always yeah, an absolute absolutely. pleasure to chat with you. Final words before we go? No, no nothing else really. Just hopefully between now and next season, Mikel can work out how to beat Unai. That'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah that would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be nice. Yeah, it's just so annoying. So annoying. Damien, yeah. thank you, mate. Always a pleasure. No, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. Of course, mate. Uh, nasty thank you to Damien, as always. And uh, again, one of our members and one of our longest term uh, ad- I was gonna say advocates of the channel. Is that right word? Supporters of the channel. That works. Uh, Sean Orr, another long term listener and uh, regular contributor to our phone ins, is here next. How are you doing, mate? You good, Joel? No, Tom. Arsenal hasn't allowed me it's to just it's just you know well. it's it's the formalities <laughs> i have to ask the question i'm sorry i know that we're not okay um, i'll be honest i'll be honest uh i know fine. you said that you know the football club can take a toll on you mentally and it does it absolutely does because at the end of the day uh when we actually lost you know my phone was going crazy with everyone texting and you know i've got this little sports group of mine and people were posting with different things and all my predictions and everything that i said you know and it's all coming back to bite me back yeah and it will. one of the things that i said 
<laughs> exactly. And one of the things I posted back is that, you know, all of this online trolling or whatever you want to call it, none of it hurts as mad, as badly as the result. None of it hurts oh, as badly so, as the 100%, result. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. No, I can block yeah. that out. You can block that out. Yeah. You can't escape the result. Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. Absolutely. That That's part of being a football fan. You know, you're going you're gonna to give it back when, you know, another team like Liverpool who have... In, in certain ways bottled it this season you know they had a five 100%. point gap they could have made it 100%. eight points and and we mm. beat them and um you know going three games without a win drawing against man united being knocked out of the fa cup by man united you look at that uh but at the same time you look at how the emirates was yesterday and people talk about the energy of the players and i think mm. it's a mental thing because when you yeah. see that the finish line is over there and you're going to be top of the league and this is a massive match against Aston Villa with one eye on Bayern Munich away as well. You've got all these things in your head and you need to win to stay in this title race or stay ahead, however you want to put it. You know That's when all these things get jumbled up and you sort of freeze and that's what our players did, you know. And you could see in the atmosphere as well. The Emirates was like, it was bubbling up into one massive bowl of nervousness from 60 plus thousand Arsenal fans and mm. they they were feeling it as well because the same stuff happened in the last season you can say with one eye or with your glass half full say that yes we've made progress our defense is better we're better uh, against the bigger teams than we were last season we're better yeah. in the second half of the season than we were last season you could look at all of that or you could also look at it with a glass half empty and you can see that Mikel, this will be four years straight, 700 plus million spent, you know, yeah. if he's not delivering a trophy, albeit against Pep and Klopp and all these yeah. massive teams. But when you look at the numbers and if it's four years without a trophy, what's next for the team? How far do you take this team and say that we're progressing but not winning trophies? How mm. do the players react to that when they go year on year without winning a trophy and in the name of progress? They don't see anything, any silverware at the end of it. I think that you raised a really good point. And I think actually it leads into one of our previous phone-ins that we had about when we were in a bit of a dip, because we tend to do these phone-ins when it's a bit of a dip, because that's where most people want to chat. Um, but <laughs> one of them was about kind of the next contract for Arteta and what that means. And you're right, if we don't win anything, it's another year that we've not won anything. And I think, you know, I think he has done enough to have earned the next contract. The thing Absolutely. is is that he has to succeed in that next contract. To earn the one after that, you're talking Premier League title, you're talking Champions League title. If he's not winning those titles in his next contract, you're asking the question, is that because he's taken us as far as he can? Because where he's taken us, I didn't think he would, in all honesty. You know, Despite being the most optimistic man on the planet at times, if you'd have asked him at the start of his tenure, do I think he'll have us competing for the title in three, four seasons? No, I didn't think he would. You know, But he is. The next question is, can he go that next step? You know, Gary Neville didn't even think he'd go here. Gary Neville thought that the ceiling was top four. That was it. But yeah. he's, you know, he's proven those people wrong. He's proven the other people wrong. He's proven a lot of his critics wrong. All his critics, you know, and I mean the harshest, most abusive of critics, all they've got left is the, the hope that he doesn't win a title. Because my goodness me, if he does bring home a title, they're going to look so silly. Whereas those of us that have actually just supported the guy, and hopes that he succeeds because it means that Arsenal succeed, you know, actually going to sit here and be like, you know, it's not going to be anything about being smug. It's about celebrating what we've achieved. But we're also grounded enough to realise that he has to in the next contract, which has to, which could be his last contract if he doesn't win anything. He's earned that deal, but he hasn't earned the right for indefinite. You know, he hasn't earned what's the, what's, what do they call it where you can't get sacked? Is it tenure? I think, you know, he's not ever he's not earned tenure at Arsenal. So he has to be able to go into that next deal and he has to deliver a Premier League title or a Champions League title, at least one of those, you know, to justify it. Um, Absolutely. How do we fix Absolutely. it in two days, Shano, for uh, for Bayern? <laughs> you know, this is, a, and my honest opinion is that I have a feeling we might crumble again like we did last season. Last season, we had the whole injury to Saliba and Tom Yasu against Sporting and... You could say it, it was an excuse, quote unquote, but Arteta's running these players down to the ground, playing the literally the same eleven, playing a 
certain 11s that aren't optimal for certain oppositions like against Villa I don't know why he changed Havertz into midfield why he mm. had to play Jesus and Trossard and then you can also see in his pre-match press conference and the post-match press conference where he was slightly different he he wasn't his usual self he was a bit more stressed out even before I the game and, yeah he was agitated and uh, when when he said that I'm the manager and I picked the team you could tell that he doesn't have a better explanation for it. Of course, you're the manager and you pick the team, but why did you pick the team this way? Yeah, he could have given a better answer than that, you know. I, yeah. I understand why and, he didn't, but he could have done. <laughs> yeah. Another point that he made is that we would have been seven, eight play, uh, points clear in any other league that we play in. No, sir, you wouldn't be. You'd be second in every other league in the top five leagues. So I don't know what he was trying to mean when he said it. So a lot of how he's speaking and what he's saying and his body language, it reflects on the rest of the team. You and I, we can both sit here and we can all say that Arteta has done all of these great things we never expected him to do. And he's taken this club to newer heights. But at the end of the day, you can also see that this is his first ever job. And there are certain things which he's never experienced before. And these last seven, eight games or the last month, month and a half of football, where you're up against Pep's Manchester City, where you're in the uh, last stages of the Champions League, it's a different ball game altogether. And you need players with big cojones to stand up for them. And you can see one player who does that in our club. And that's Mr. Who's not being played in LCM, Martin Odegaard. And I, I see the Odegaard LCM talk every day and I see from certain Twitter tacticals who, who do it. I understand the logic behind it as well. But at the end of the day, he's the only one who stood up and he went to the fans after the match yesterday. He stayed back when all the other players were inside, you know. He's basically Mikel Skid, if you, if you want to put it that way. But he's the only one yeah, who's sure, got... I know what you mean. Yeah, who's, who's got the right attitude in these big games when it really matters so the rest of the team need to pull their socks up and deliver we talk about Saka Saka I'm not saying he's having a bad uh, recent run mm. but you want your big More. players in those big moments you want them mm. to create big moments you know score a goal out of certain individual brilliance Mm. We're like lacking against that Man United win. last season with that strike. Absolutely, that yeah. absolutely. We need more of that from our attackers. We need more mm. of that from our individual players. They need to show their character and individuality. This is the point in the season that defines you from world class to great. That's what wins players Ballon d'Ors or gets you in contention. Because right now we are in the Champions League quarterfinal. We can go into the semi-finals. We can go all the way. We can win the league, theoretically, if City slip up some way or the other. But these players need to, now they have to deliver. Now they have to show that whether they're going to be world-class or whether they're going to be legendary or great. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah, what you mean. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. Exactly. Shanoor, yeah. thank you so much for your contribution. You raised some really good points and made me certainly think about the um, the first point you made as well because we need to yeah. see more. Um, and I think Absolutely. it was uh, it was Alex from the different knock who was raising the point about do we have a De Bruyne, do we have a Salah, do we have a Thierry Henry? And the answer is, I think that we have players with potential to be those guys. You know, I think Declan Rice has stepped up at times. The goal he scored against Manchester United, the goal he scored against Luton, you know, he stepped up. Erdegaard, I think, has got the potential to be that guy. Saka does too, but... We don't have that established, world-class, 28, 29, 30-year-old player that is capable of doing what De Bruyne did against Crystal Palace the other day, for example, when they Absolutely. go 1-0 down and he pings one in from 30 yards, you know, so, well, 25. Um, but thank you, Shanor. I really appreciate your Absolutely. time, mate. One little thing I'd like to add before, just Very little. for the fans as well. Yeah, just the in one line. <laughs> I want to... Uh, stop seeing fans scapegoating certain players. I know it's very easy to pick apart uh, Zinchenko and his defending or Eddie and Ketty or whoever it is. You know, it's not one player who's failed. The whole team failed. Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. It's not going to be... Zinchenko alone is not the only reason we didn't win yesterday. You know, so absolutely. to dig him out solely is, is wrong. Um, but thank you, Shano. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, great that you're having this uh, call in at this um, important time for us fans to Indeed. you know raise our voices and get our opinions across. You're very welcome. Speak to you soon.
Thanks, Shadow. Always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, you know, we do this show so people can talk and, and get and get their points of view across. It's so far, you know, obviously we have one caller who disagree with points of view. So far, it's been relatively, I think, constructive would be probably the correct term um, about where we can go moving forwards. Um, let me just, uh, what's the word? Uh, check my consult my list of who I said was up next. Nathan, I think, is, is up next. Uh, Nathan, how you doing, mate? You good? You well? I'm good, Tom. How are you? Very good, mate. Very well. I, I'm not, but I'm pretending I am. <laughs> so yeah, so, not bad. So, not bad. So so am um, I. So am I. I'm a bit frustrated, actually. We all are. So we all, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what went wrong, and and how do we fix it? It was, to be honest, not much went wrong in the first half. It was a mm. really good performance in the first half. Odegaard really was unplayable. Stunning. Um, but obviously everything went wrong in the second half. The, the problem was that we got outsmarted by Uno Emery and he's not getting enough credit for it. Um, really? I think he's getting too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think... I, no, honestly, it, because the first half was great. Like, we were attacking, we were dominant, we were aggressive in our play. I was questioning why he put Havertz in the midfield because he's doing so well up front. Um, but when I saw like the perform the tactical analysis of Havertz running into space, trying to break break the lines. I could understand why he was doing that. Mm. Um but it wasn't working for us in the second half. That wasn't happening. Aston Villa were playing the ball in their half, breaking our press and it we started to defend deeper and going back and back and it just felt like Arteta had to change it. It really mm. felt like he had to do something. I mean we were started to defending at the edge of our box, and before you know it, it we felt like the counter-attacking team. And at, at that, and Gary Neville made a, a point in in commentary where we, it felt like we had to take a step back to go forward. And if that meant taking Zinchenko off because we needed more defensive prowess at the back, would that meant bringing Thomas Partey in? Then he should have done that. But ultimately, he didn't. They were making changes. Born Bailey in the second half. Um, I think he brought on someone else as well, but yeah, it, um, things, Moreno, just, things just didn't change. Moreno. Yeah, it, it it just worked for Aston Villa, and it, once Inchenko made that mistake, gave the ball away on the edge of the box, and he gave it to Tielemans, and he hit the crossbar from that shot. I felt that was a time where you know Arteta should have it should have woken him up and say it's not working. Mm. Um, th- that that was really the only thing. I mean, you say the only thing, but. It was it was one thing that he didn't change, but ultimately, we're not going to come across an Unai Emery every game in the Premier League. Because um, Arteta, mm-hmm. I think he's t- tactically done really well with the Arsenal team. You don't, you can't go eleven games unbeaten and say that it was it was his fault. So I think he did really well, um, but it was just it was just it was just that tactical um, masterclass for Unai Emery in that game that I think that did us. Uh, yeah, look, I, I, I do stand by what I said, where I think Inu Emery is getting too much credit. I, I think that he deserves credit, um, without shadow of a doubt, for what he did in the second half and for some of the changes. But I, I think there's more to be said that we were almost the architects of our own downfall in, in many ways. Yeah. You know, I think that the way in which we obviously didn't take our chance in the first half, we should be clear at half time. Yeah, you know, yeah. Trossard should score. Jesus should score. Saka yeah. could probably score with the two chances he has. Yeah. One hits the post, one goes just wide. Havertz could probably do better with one of the opportunities he has going through on goal. We could be better and quicker at releasing those chip balls behind because Havertz, fans were getting annoyed that Havertz was offside. The fans should be more annoyed at the, the service being slow because the, yeah. slow, the yeah. service was too slow at times. So it didn't catch the run right. We could have been clear in that first half. Second half, actually, we start the second half okay. You know, we start creating chances. We're still dominant in the sense of having the ball and having the chances. Rice has a chance. Trossard has a chance. Um, Jesus obviously has that penalty call as well. Then the Tielemans chance happens after. Not from like some brilliant uh, Aston Villa play. They got that Tielemans chance. It came because Zinchenko was an idiot with the ball, you know, and just yeah, gave the ball yeah, away yeah, yeah, in his own yeah. defensive third. And then we had the chance where Jesus tests Emi Martinez as well. And then Erdogan gets this kick in the chest and goes down and just isn't the same for the next 10 minutes and then is eventually taken off. We lose the game because, for me, Arteta doesn't make the changes that are necessary in the second half. And Yeah, yeah. But do you know where I'm coming from? 
Yeah, no, I agree with everything you said. The, I mean, if if those chances go in in the first half, we're not talking about this. Arsenal would have probably gone on to win the game, I think, if we take those chances in the first half. Um, but we made a lot of mistakes in the second half, and that came from Aston Villa forcing us to make some mistakes as well. Um, and that's where, I, but that's where Arteta should have changed it. Um, that's the only criticism I have for Arteta, though. He's done really well yeah. with the squad. I'm not. I'm not on this bandwagon where we lose one game and all of a sudden... I don't think it's a bandwagon, on... Nathan. I, I, I think it's <laughs> it kind of a like bit of a crumbling, you know, shack. Yeah. But, yeah, I just feel like uh, we shouldn't... We should trust Arteta. He's doing really well with this squad. I actually think we can go to Bayern and get a result there. Mm. Um, I, and, I, and, we, I, and we think that because we know how good we can be. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean the first. I mean the first leg. We we matched them. We matched them in every on every mm. level. I think we lacked some maturity in terms of managing the game, especially in the Champions League level. And obviously that will come with a lot of time because this is the first time this team has been in the Champions League. Obviously, but after time it will come. But I think on the quality level, there's no difference between us and Bayern. We can go there and get something. It just det- it just determines what te- how we perform as a team and how Bayern turns up as well. I think that's going to be the key. Yeah, we have to wait and see. It's, and, and we don't have many days to, to wait either because it is only two days from now. Um, so we look forward to it. Uh, Nathan, is this your first time calling in, Nathan? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I've, I've, you smashed I've, it, I've mate. Thank you. I've commented a few times, but uh, it's my first time here live. You did brilliantly, mate. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Much appreciate. Nath, uh, just very quickly before we go into our next caller, Daniel, I'm just going to read out this comment from Jay in our, who's currently waiting in the queue, but he wanted to leave some thoughts in case we don't get all the way around to him because there's a lot of people waiting. Uh, Jay says, the four problems with Arsenal that nobody wants to talk about are one, Saka and the centre-backs are not irreplaceable, so they don't put in the effort. Oh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think they're just good and we need to actually find some competition. Uh, two, I mean, to say that they don't put in the effort is very harsh. Uh, two, Havertz can't play outside the box, literally. He can't make screamers um, in terms of that. I mean, I'm not going to necessarily judge a player on whether or not they can score long shots um and to be fair to Havertz the amount of times he has chipped balls into the box and and made clear runs and made space for other players as well I think that's harsh three he should make quick selections at the beginning of the first half not at the end that I can't disagree with I think he should have been quicker with the substitutions and four when they score uh when Arsenal score first uh sorry when the other opposition score they fold Arsenal should learn how to fix that I mean, to be fair, I think Arsenal last season showed a great willingness to come from behind in in a number of games. Um, so again, I'm trying to think this season of teams in which we've we've come from behind. I mean, thankfully we've scored most of the time at first for most of the seasons. There's not been too many examples, but a lot of the time last season we did actually show a real ability to come from behind when we needed to. Uh, let's get Daniel into the conversation. Uh, Daniel joins us now. How are you doing, mate? You good? You well? Yeah, well, as it can be. <laughs> I, I know I ask that to everyone, and I know that everyone's responding can in the be. same way. When I say that, just assume that Arsenal don't exist for a second. Are you good? Are you well? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I, I can't help it. Know. Is this your first time calling in? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, first time on this channel. Um, mm. bear, bear with me. Um, I do have a stutter. <laughs> No problem. Uh, I appreciate the bravery for coming on, mate. So fair play to you. Yeah. Talk to me yeah. about what went wrong yesterday. I was shocked to see Jesus up front because, like, usually we, we've played better with Havertz up front, of all people. Yes. Um, like, because Havertz has scored, pff, like, how many goals this season? Nine. Like, nine or ten. Season. Yeah, nine or ten. And whereas Jesus hasn't scored since Sevilla, uh, I don't think. Like yeah, he, like yeah, yeah. He, he he's had a few injuries. Forest, Forest away. I think Jesus' his last goal was. Jesus, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. But to be fair, that was only I think I think that was Jan or Feb. I think that was January or February. But yeah, it's one goal yeah, but, in, in a long period. Yeah. Yeah, like one goal in like five or six, maybe even seven, eight games, like. Sure. Yeah. Whereas we need a, we do need a proper out and out forward, yeah. and yeah, and I was surprised um, when we played City a couple a couple a couple of weeks ago, and and Jay was was up front, and I was like, well, is that a point to prove to City for mm-hmm. him? But 
overall, I didn't think n- neither of those two games were for, for Jesus. Yesterday, for the, uh, I got annoyed where we just kept trying to pass the ball in. Like, that's the one thing I hate that we do. Like, like we, we keep trying to pass the ball in. And Overplay, in that respect, yeah. yeah. And we we become too predictable. And like and and again, like you don't want to give Unai too much like, like, like credit to that. I don't either. But it like it's all, like like when we play against him, it's it's always typical. It's always typical that that we just don't go over the line. I mean, I'm not. I mean, yesterday the first thing I got from my friends was dun 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 dun. Like like the Bayern yeah. celebrate goal yeah oh, goal yes, celebration down 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 yeah 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 and that's got, it's got a name that's escaped me. Someone in the chat box will tell us the name of that song. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah yeah I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah and I was like I don't know if you allow swear, swearing on here but like I, I want to swear the video so you can go if no <laughs> well well then. As as my friend went down 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 down, I literally sent what sent sent a, a voice note back, uh, a voice note back saying you can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, I could see that coming from a mile away. Yeah, yeah, but like, I, I'm like, there's still some football to be put. Still quite a bit of football to be played. Like, I knew that that we that we were gonna drop points. Like could see it a mile off, like it. It was just a matter of when. Hmm. Um, but I'm not too like I haven't given up hope just yet, because sure. there, there's 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 a lot of football to be played. Yeah, I'm I, I'm dreading when Wednesday night, because <laughs> hmm. I, I don't want to hear that song too much or at all. <laughs> Maybe leave the well, group at all. Chat. Maybe leave the group chat. That might oh, be yeah. well, or just turn, or just turn my phone off. All that, yeah, all that. <laughs> yeah, just turn my phone off. <laughs> um, there, there has been a few times where we have gone goal down, but we have come back. Luton, for example, like where we grabbed that last gasp, gasp winner. Yeah, like, like, but like, like the best moment for me this season has been the the Man City home game. Like where we finally got that got that monkey off of our off backs, back. yeah, of not being able to beat them. Uh, but what also has annoyed me is nothing to do with like Arsenal. It's it, it's to do with the international break because okay. that you like that because I win for you. <laughs> yeah, like if like if we didn't have that that international break before we played City, we beat City. Really, you think it's that big of an influence? Yeah, because we were white hot before that. That mm. uh, 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 before that break, we won every game. We won, game. We we won every league game. Yeah, exactly. Before. Yeah, yeah. Like we were white hot. Like no, like no one could touch us. And then, then it's like bang, mm. international break. Like. And then, like for two weeks, like please don't get injured, please don't get injured, please don't get mm. injured. And thankfully, they didn't. But like with with international football, players don't try as hard because, especially, so w- yeah, exactly, because w- w- their clubs need them. Especially like right now, where where three teams are going for the prem, the prem, yeah, like like. <clears throat> like, like that'll be in the back of their minds, and then they've yep. got to get back, back t- together again, mm. right? And then, but like, I just feel like that killed, like that that killed our momentum, like going, uh, coming back from the break. Because if we didn't have that break, we beat Man City one nil, maybe two one. I don't know, but like, we just we would look. We would look a lot better if we didn't have that break. But like, yeah, there's a lot of football to be played. Hopefully, <laughs> like, like it's not looking likely, but hopefully, yeah. City do like lose one game, like just lose one game, please, and we, just one. <laughs> yeah, I do think we peaked too early. 
in a way. I I do think well, we I don't peaked know too when early. We can peak, Daniel, to be honest, because like last season, we peaked at the start of the season and we did really, really well. Mm. This season, we've we were kind of tinkering a bit at the start and it wasn't free flowing and people were questioning our fluidity, questioning how competitive we were. Look, at the end of the day, we still managed to get back to the top of the table with the title in our hands with seven games to go. We yeah. had this period in 2024 before that dreaded international break, as you rightly brought up. And, but the thing is like, I, I don't think that necessarily it's, it's about peaking. I, I think that a season needs to be for a title challenger. You start here and then the rest of the season is just a rise. Yeah. Like, you can have maybe a yeah. little dip, but it's about a rise and just keeping it consistently going. So if you if, if you've had a peak, it kind of is it's an indication that you've reached a high point and now you're on a slope. A title challenger doesn't have a peak; it just yeah. keeps going. Yeah, and like, like, and like, because uh, uh, like a, a Liverpool uh, mate of mine, like he tried ban uh, uh, bantering me about uh, yesterday. So I'm I, starting I to question your him. friend's choice, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I I gave as good as I got. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair yeah, enough. Like, yeah. I, I, like we've just like we've just like got to try and keep calm. Like keep calm. Like it's one defeat. Hopefully, and just yeah, just do our best against Bayern Munich. But I always knew when the draw came out, I thought it's gonna be Bayern, isn't it? We all knew that. It's gonna be buying, and yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. first game buy. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that was, like, was, that was the last response of our listeners uh, when we did the uh, the Champions League draw. Um, Daniel, you've absolutely smashed it. Yeah, so thank you so much thank for coming you. on. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolute pleasure, all mine, and uh, all right. safe, safe evening. And I hope you enjoy yourself, mate. Yeah, take care, mate. Bye bye. Thanks, pal. Big love for Daniel in the chat. Smashed it. Um, lovely stuff. And uh, I think that the point about the international break is one that is just going to... Uh, it's going to give me nightmares again. So thanks for that, Daniel. Yeah, I'm going to be <laughs> cursing that international break that really did take away our momentum. Um, but yes, uh, let's jump into uh, my list. Who's next? It's... Uh, I'm on the wrong list now. Uh, it is Bill. Uh, Bill's up next. How you doing, Bill? Hey, Tom. Well, if we're pretending that uh, Arsenal we're doesn't pretending. exist, then <laughs> uh, I'm pretty pretending. bored because I don't have a lot of hobbies. And, but it is a nice sunny day here. So I guess we've got go. that going. There you go. I, I tell you, I've, I've learned that I need to find more hobbies in life because of Arsenal. The last two years, I tell you what, it's, it's been a case. I talk about it a lot on the show, actually. I talked about it this morning saying that, like, you know, mental health wise, you need to be out. You need to broaden your life beyond Arsenal because if you don't, it, 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 your life ends up suffering so much. So yeah, I encourage you, Bill, to find some, find some, uh, find some more interests beyond it. But let's let's talk about this thing that keeps on, you know, eating away at our self esteem, which is Arsenal Football Club. <laughs> what went wrong and how do we fix it? I mean, if I had the answer to that, then I'd be applying to a job at Arsenal. But uh... well, Bill, thank you for your time, mate. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, we've heard a lot of suggestions about like, you know, what went wrong, what and, you know, after a loss like this, especially late in the season, you know, the the results can feel, you know, even more impactful just because we have a lot less time to respond uh, when we have a slip up. But, you know, I just I I know you're going to have a lot of people talking about, you know, what went wrong, what can be fixed just to. But I just want to, you know, mm. uh, inject some positivity into this conversation. Like Always we're will. 10, one and one in 2024, like 10 wins, one draw, one loss. That yeah. is that is really good. We're still in the title hunt against, you know, basically the German equivalent of or the English equivalent of Bayern Munich. We're playing in the English Bundesliga at this point. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that S City haven't won like what seven or eight in a row is a uh, generational Liverpool team pushing them and, you know, beating them once. Um, and on top of that, Villa are a good team. Like it, it's not, you know, it, it, it sucks because, you know, every point lost in a title race is terrible, but Villa are not a team this season that is, that it's shameful to lose to. They are, it, 
you know, begrudgingly because, you know, they're being managed by a former uh, manager of ours and their goalkeeper is, you know, one of the most annoying uh, <laughs> players on the planet at the moment yeah, and a former yeah. player. He wears that with a badge of honor, he does. Yeah. His hatred for Arsenal, but yeah. I don't think uh, he hates Arsenal, to be fair. No, I don't think, I, I genuinely don't enough. think he hates Arsenal. I just think he loves being the the pantomime villain. I, I, that's, you know, that's what I think he, he enjoys. But yeah, and on top of that, if we look at Arteta's um, uh, post-match interview, like he took full responsibility for this loss. It, if you take this match and say Eric Ten Hag was in charge of Arsenal, he would have oh. said, "Oh, well, we just des- we totally deserve to win this awesome. match. No, no, <laughs> we, we did nothing wrong, and somehow we still lost. Yeah. But Arteta, he's taking responsibility. He's going to work on this, and we have a very short window. Uh, you know, I, you're going to be doing preview shows tomorrow uh, for uh, yeah, for the Bayern Munich that. game. Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, like the first half of that Aston Villa match." was probably some of the best football I've seen us play this season. Like we were getting in behind so much. We had free reign of their, of our attacking third. We Mm. just could not finish to save our lives. And it it gives me shades of, you know, December, but perhaps that's just something that comes and goes. Man City have their slip ups. They just tend to have them earlier in the season. They lost to this Aston Villa team earlier in the season. So Mm. I I mean, you know, it's not all doom and gloom is what I'm trying to uh, put forth. No, and I think you raise it well and I think you put it forward well. Some people aren't going to um, accept those views and that's fine. You know, it's people's choice. You can look at it each in different ways. And I think this is an interesting point. And I'll finish with you, Bill, on on this point. And I want to talk about the word standards uh, actually with you, which comes up a lot. Um, Some people say, you know, second place is the first loser. Um, some people say that you know we need to raise our standards. We need to be more, you know, we need to be more uh, strict on Arsenal. We need to be more ruthless on Arsenal and stuff. But you know, I I look at where we were and and contextually, and I see how where we've come from and where we are now and what we're doing in the context of what we're up against. And I can't help that we are only going in one direction. Yeah, and and like you said. Uh... Perhaps we hit a peak here, but, you know, mountains, you know, they have peaks and then you go down and then you can go back up and hit an even higher peak. And perhaps that's just what we're getting to here. Uh, I mean, it could all it it could be a very short dip down and we come back and, you know, put two or three past Bayern Munich this uh, this Wednesday. And all of a sudden the uh, fan base is, you know, completely ecstatic. It's. It's that time of the season, uh, although it feels like it's that time of the season, the whole season with the Arsenal fan base, but can't help that. Indeed. No, Bill, thank you so much for your time. Make sure you give your channel a shout out as well before you go. I wouldn't call it much of a channel. There's not uh, not anything on there, but you can find me on Twitter at Goonerworks uh, if you want to hear some of my ramblings uh, across the season. Lovely stuff, Bill. Always a pleasure, my friends. Thank you for jumping on. Thanks for having me, Tom. Cheers, Bill. Um, lovely bloke. Met him, met him in Chicago, and uh, he is as lovely as he was there in real life. I can attest to that. Um, let's bring on a man who always feels like he follows Bill in our phone-in shows, um, and that's uh, TJR. How you doing, mate? You good? You well? Oh, thanks for asking, Tom. How are you? I'm very <laughs> oh, well. It's a question. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> waste question. any time, mate. No, no. Indeed, it's a question. I'm actually go... going to ask. Sorry, go on. Oh, I was just gonna say I was gonna launch straight in. Go, I can go macro. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, micro. I was gonna say like I was. I've been asking people what went wrong. How do we fix that? I'm not gonna ask the rest of our phone ins that. I'm actually just gonna say, what would you like to say? So tell me. Fair enough. I've I've got the bad habit of making notes while other people go. So my note for Bill was habit? progress is not linear, and then he pretty much said what I was about to say. Um. Managers are a package, you know. Our Ted is not yeah. perfect, everyone knows that, and it depends how you break down and what you want in a manager. Some people want, you know, an Inzaghi and Fulgen standards and winners, imaginary trophy, and lots of other things, and all this other fantasy land stuff. I live in the world of sort of progressive, measurable goals that we seem to be ticking off largely. Yeah, there's the rah rah kind of guys, there's the PR types, you know. 
whether that's a uh, Mourinho or some guy that wins the press conference. That's his main thing, which I don't think Arteta is winning any press conferences. I, don't, no. I think that's probably the area where he's... He's starts. trying recently. He's trying yes. to make a few jokes. They've not really landed, but he's tried. Yeah. Yep. It's <laughs> got a bit of the Klopp, like, I'm a bit angry and we lost. Please just go away kind of vibes. Yeah. Uh, and then there's yeah. the innovators and developers, and they're rare. You get If you get one of those at your club, you usually stick with them, you know. So it's Pep, it's Klopp, it's uh, uh, Wenger, it's uh, – I've just blanked on the guy at Leeds. Is Arteta in that group? I, I think he's on his way to mm. – so here's, here's what I'll say. Not in terms generally. of success with those managers, but in the, the, the label of being a, an innovator type thing, you know, because I think I he think... has innovated some things at Arsenal. Yeah, so what I would say is that if you got him in a PowerPoint presentation situation, I think he'd mm. be very, very different. And I think this season, whatever the five steps were or plans for goals and that sort of stuff, I think this this season he's shown that he's tried to be a defensive innovator more than an, an attacking in, innovator. And maybe that next season that'll come with purchases and then I think the next step above that in the five, you know, point plan is probably youth uh, innovation. So he, at the beginning, tried to, in the beginning, Jesus, yeah, uh, tried to move things around. Right, explain yeah, yeah. yeah. in the beginning, uh, yeah. I, I caught it, go on. <laughs> I'm looking a bit jesus here at the moment. So, uh, Indeed. so he's he's moved things around. He thought Partey might be here, this might be here. I'm, I'm convinced he thought maybe there was a chance that Rice could move into that Stones role at some point if we were really, I don't know, some if something had have gone wrong certain ways, he would have tried him in that role. But I think he's very pragmatic. He's He sees things as they come and he, get, he he lets things fail before throwing them away too quickly. So he's, he's one could say patient, one could say pragmatic, whatever, conservative, you know, cautious, that sort of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I think next season he's got some pretty big but also obvious holes to fill. I think Zubamendi is going to be our first signing, and I think he's the long-term Jorginho learning off him, but also the Mo replacement. So that'll be maybe double pivot. Who knows? But that's also playmaking but quicker. But also from what we saw at PSG, he can also get cut apart in the middle, you know. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, when you were talking about like the goals and stuff, like the progressive mm -hmm. goals, I just want to bring out mm -hmm. Wayne says this. So, do your goals include trophies? And now I don't want to speak for you, Tijer, but I find these questions so mind-numbingly frustrating because it's like because it's a case of like we talk about goals, we talk about progression, we talk about what we want to do. Do we want Arsenal to win nothing? No. Are we stupid? No, we're not. Like <laughs> clearly, well, we did not. <laughs> Speak for yourself, uh, but no, in, within the range of what we've got and what we want, of course, trophies is the goal. Of course, that's where we want to go. We just have a different mindset in terms of how that time frame might work, and how the processes are getting there, what we're willing to be patient with in seeing. But I think I'd be right in saying to you guys that if we thought that we're not heading on a track towards that goal, we'd say it, and we'd say that exactly. we need to find a new way of uh, and a different track. Yeah, and that track doesn't solely run through Arteta. It runs through the players. It runs through yep. Edu. It runs through even the assistants and coaches that might move on, might not move on. We might be rumoured for this player. We might not be, you know, that sort of stuff. And that's, you know, if if Clive was here, he'd probably sum it up mellifluously in a sentence or two. But if Clive was here, no callers again. We, I'm just been talking for an hour. But yeah, go <laughs> <laughs> well, we improve in lots of we improve in lots of ways, and what what I assume he would say would be, what's the better path? At the moment, mm. the better path, I don't see one out there. I think last time I spoke to you, it's like who's the upgrade on Arteta at this point mm. in Arsenal's sort of growth? You could argue that he's Zaggy, apparently. Yeah, well, I playing a fourth the only despite the fact he plays know, a three five. Thiago Mota, like, can you talk your way into? Zabi Alonso is probably the only one realistically, but that's unrealistic as well. And then you're mm. talking all these other crazy notes. Anyway, mm. completely different conversation. Um, and now I've lost my train of thought. Uh, no, it's fine. You've got a minute. Uh, so just, round it out. <laughs> oh, 
ask me something that isn't going to be me breaking down how it's impossible. Most... Every Arsenal conversation is a podcast. I That's <laughs> I, I was lead, I was leading to something, and then I was going to bring up Watkins, but that was going to lead to something. But anyway, Striker? I think is that what where we've realised. No, no, what we've real. I've got it. What we've realised cool. in the last week, maybe the collective way, who knows, um, is the English teams are not only knackered because of the schedule and how many games, but a lot struggle to counter, uh, struggle to defend against really, really top end counter attacking teams. And I think that's where Villa got us. I think Bayern got us as well. Uh, Liverpool got done by that with At- Atlanta as well. And there's a lot of there's a lot of really tired Premier League teams and mm. our depth isn't as, you know, deep as we think it is. And yeah. it, especially if Arteta runs people into the ground, which is my main concern, if we're saying, how do we fix it? Let's yeah. rotate better and find new players. And, I'll, you know, I think we're going to get rid of uh, Smith Rowe, Reese, maybe Fabio Vieira, maybe Partey. And then you bring in probably four-ish players. I've I've loved Kadioglu because I think he can play six positions realistically for us, yeah. and that's yeah. almost yeah. as valuable as anything. And then we're talking crazy names that would cost money, like Rafael Liao or Rodrigo or even your mate uh, Fofana or Kubo or Diamante if we go for a defender. <laughs> You know? Indeed. Yeah. No, well, yeah no, you're, the, some... you're the one that I hear going on. About. He's banging That's... the drum. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, there are players player, in the summer. Like, I think yeah. he's a great player. I think there are players yeah. in the summer that can and, and, and will uh, transform us. It's, it's going to be very intriguing. And uh, you can watch it all <laughs> right here every morning, 8 a.m. UK time. TJ is always a, and I mean this genuinely, and not that I've not meant the other words genuinely, but I absolutely <laughs> always love speaking to you. So thank you for coming on. No problem, mate. You too. Have a good time. You too. Enjoy it. Lovely stuff. Uh, we've got half an hour just under. We might end up going over. I've got one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven at the moment. The seven that are here waiting, I'm going to do my absolute darndest to get you all on, but it may require us to be a little bit more streamlined um, with our conversation. So bear that in mind. I'm not being rude if I cut you off. I just want to try and get as many of us people as we can have been waiting very patiently. Uh, Benny's up next. I'm going to catch him out. He's not ready. There you go. How are you doing, Benny? You good, Joel? I'm good. How are you, Tom? Yeah, very good, mate. Very good. In Other than Arsenal, very good indeed. <laughs> what would you like well, to say? You could. It, it could be worse. You could be in Germany. And I was actually yeah. about to go to Munich on Wednesday, actually, but for something else. So good job. I'm not going anymore. So I think I'm going to stay in Cologne. I'm at, I, I live in Cologne, so I'm going to stay in Cologne mm. for the moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Ask not watching the Euros in the summer then potentially. I will be watching England in the Euros. Yeah, they're coming here. It's yeah, it's they're playing in Cologne, Slovenia, isn't it? I think exactly. the game is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's going to be really nice. Um, to see. So, in terms of Arsenal, I'm going to kind of repeat a point I've already made before. I think your last caller made um, the same point. Actually, before I make this point, it's I think we have um, we have such a really nice, diverse fan base, and I really like the kind of views everybody shares. Um, and also the chat. Uh, there's um, people that have um, um, they're always respectful in the chat. But like mm. one of the views I kind of will say it's it's more against the pl- and players like the players, especially the ones they brought in this season, one of them being Havertz. Mm. So I know there's a lot of comparison between Ijaka and Havertz and rightly so because they're playing in kind of similar positions so- sometimes. But if you look at the, um, the span of um, uh, um, Zaka's Arsenal career, he was here for seven seven years, seven years, mm. seven seasons, and he scored about yeah, like uh, senior level. Are we talking yeah. about? Yeah, but people don't kind of bring up the fact that he he actually scored um seventeen goals in the whole time he was in Arsenal. He scored mm. only seventeen goals. Havertz is on ten, and yet everyone seems to kind of blame him for all our struggles and troubles this season, and. It's really fun. It's the same and same thing for David Raya. Like before, fans we normally would give players a lot more time, a lot more leeway. But now it's like this: like if he's not, um, if they are not firing in the first season, then let's be done with them. Like 
I it's like I'm seeing people saying we should sell um David Raya. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not I'm 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 yes, he um his performances have not been always stellar, but yeah, you can kind of see where Ateta is going with the way he's playing and introduced him. And by all means, he is going to improve. I, because actually, you know what was funny? When I was watching the Bayern Munich game, I like started to get it. I was like, the way Neuer was so good at the ball, where he did like that chip over one of our players and passed it to the uh, his the, his right back. I was like, this could kind of be Raya in a few seasons. But people people really need to give him time. It can't just be like, okay, three months and he's going to turn to a, a world star. And I'm sure people mm. are in the chat still having a go at me because they're like, oh my God, we... Ignore. We, we better, better, better. <laughs> I do every day. <laughs> I yeah, get battered every morning. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how you survive. Now, the, and one of the other points I would like to make is somebody's already making it now. We have two, and I've already made this point before on the previous show. We have mm. too much players that are just kind of hangers on in the squad. Yes, yeah, surplus. We really need to kind of. Especially in the reserves, we need to get b- b- better. I heard um, uh, um, I keep referencing different other pod- Arsenal podcasts okay. where they exist. <laughs> some, somebody was like, "We are part of the big boys. We are a big boy club. We are we yeah, yeah. we need to kind of be in the m- mindset that we are going to be challenging for titles, and every yeah. game or almost every game is going to be important. So players need to be on form like like that, or else they get dropped. So all this like okay um. Yes, I understand. Vieira has come on for a few minutes. ESR has been on for a few minutes. Reese hasn't got like a lot of game time. Like literally, you need to like all games need to be. Uh, you need to be thinking. I need to win all games. Ateta, that's how Ateta is thinking. I need to win all games. There is not m- much time for experimentation. He can't mm. afford to be dropping points every every um every way he goes. So these players yeah. that are coming in. If they don't, if they come in for a few minutes and they can't perform, there is really no use or need for them to be even in the squad. Yeah. I feel yeah. so, a lot of them need to be got rid of it. I won't mention their names because I know the chat will I probably will. I'll happily have will. <laughs> the, I'll have to the see chat, them. <laughs> the chat will probably still have to go at me. And I guess the last point I want to make is because I know you have like loads of calls, like. And I know I'm going to get hounded for this, but it's... Stop worrying about what people think, honestly. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I don't care. Like, normally yeah. what happens is that if somebody, like, says something bad, I just block them anyway. But in it's Fair really enough. and truly, if we look it in perspective, it's really just only one game. One game against Aston Villa, we played terribly. The whole squad, obviously, were, um, we did not perform as expected. But... We need to look at it like Arteta has put us in this like chance where we can think, oh, we can be challenging for a title. We're all yeah. we're nearing the semi-finals. Is it next round? Is the semi-finals of the yep. Champions League? And Arteta has put us in this. Arteta has put us in this position. I was uh, in when um the Wenger out brigade was there. Mm. I was one of the first people that were like. Wenga is not good enough. I need. I would. When people were like, "No, no, no, keeping him," I was like one of the first. Yeah. I can see the progress, and you mentioned it before. We have made progress under this manager. Mm. Why, in the world where you see Chelsea tri- um, changing their manager almost every year, same thing with Man United. They might even change their manager. We, oh, yeah. we want to change. There's there's not a lot out, out there that are quality. We, at the end of the day, we're looking for someone better than um, Pep. If we want to win the title, or if want, people are really honest with themselves and say, this is where we want to get to, we need to look for a coach better than Pep. There are not a mm. lot of them out there. I let's be, let's there. be honest with Frank. <laughs> Just because somebody wins, yes, Alonso is really good. He won the league title in um, Germany. But he was at Sociedad before mm. he came to Germany. He didn't win anything there. He had won nothing with Sociedad. And now he's won the um, the Bundesliga with um, Leverkusen. Now everybody thinks he's like the best. He was in the Sociedad like, youth team. It's worth pointing out. Yeah, the yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. Youth team. So, but yeah. he, the, I want to call it, now everyone thinks he's like best thing since, since like yeah, yeah, yeah. We need somebody yeah, yeah. actually better than Guardiola. 
to compete mm. to which to, which, not... which doesn't exist benny like it's, it's not it's not out there like if you, the only the only reason you get rid of arteta is because you guarantee you're bringing in somebody better and that just simply doesn't it doesn't it's not there well, and the thing also is it exist, it's... But not many and for those like, that like say are like Arteta out, bring X Y Z. That's not a position. That's not a position. If you're Arteta out, it's because you believe that if Arteta was to go, is you trust the club to bring in the right guy. And if exactly. you're telling me that you know that the club are going to bring in Ancelotti, because that's what we've been talked about, which isn't going to happen because he's just signing a new deal at Real Madrid. He's the only other real coach that can probably go toe to toe with Pep at the moment. It's not happening. So I do remember these got. managers. Do, do do remember these managers still have FFP to contend with? Some of yeah, them, of some of them haven't played in squads. With are you telling me Ancelotti is going to take this current Arsenal side, Arsenal side, reform it and become even better than Man City? Who, I don't see a who pathway. Would know? We don't. Know. I don't see a pathway don't really. But thank, Benny, you, thank you for jumping on, mate. I'm I'm going to have to cut you off because yeah, yeah, I'm conscious right. of the time. But I appreciate it, man, and thank you for raising some really good points as well. Thanks, mate. Speak to you soon. Uh, right, uh, Elliot's up next. Elliot's next. How are you doing, Elliot? You good? You well? <coughs> I'm well, sir. How are you? <laughs> I don't sound very sure. Um, we're going to condense this. It's going to be two to three minutes because that's all I can give to people now. So tell me okay. what it is you jumped on to say. Um, well, uh, speaking on my lunch break. <laughs> yeah, 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 indeed. Indeed, always. <laughs> As always. Um, I, I I just wanted to ask you a question. Did did you think that Arteta's changes made yesterday to yesterday's lineup smack of arrogance? No. Because I, I did. Think the, I think the first half showed that it wasn't. Because I did. Because I think what Arteta was doing yesterday was putting square pegs into round holes. He was putting Havertz in the middle when he knew that he wasn't proving himself well. He should have been up front. He put Jesus up front when he knew good and darn well he wasn't doing anything there outside of Europe. He put Zinchenko at uh, at wing back when uh, it was clear that uh, this man is dealing with some of the better wingers in the league and he cannot match up to them. And uh, he was leaving uh, he was leaving Declan Rice alone in the middle, quite simply, and he got overrun. I, 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 when it comes to our I mean, he's a good manager to a certain extent, but in certain, in certain Capacities, he has flights of fancy where he thinks he's the he's the smart smartest man in the room, and he is not designated, and his record doesn't ne designate that, doesn't warrant that, doesn't. It, it's I, I think that he's that. earned the right to, as he said in his post match press conference, where he said like he's, he's the manager, he picks the eleven. I I think that there is a smack of like contradiction where we're saying that he we have to make changes. We have. To, I'm being critical of Arteta's lack of rotation for games because he needs to rotate because otherwise we're going to burn ourselves out. He then rotates and makes some changes, knowing that we've got Bayern on Wednesday. And then we're criticising and saying he's arrogant for making changes. That's where I'm struggling. Well, I, I say this. It's, it's, I mean, the rotations that he's making don't need to be made necessarily. I don't think Harris has made, uh, has made himself a shining light in the middle. Everybody in, God, in, in God's greenest lands know that. And yet he yeah, puts that's, him that's there fine. because but he has to justify the five million pound salary. I, I, I the generally... first half performance, mate. That's all I point to. The first half performance was one of the best performances in the first half we've seen. All that it lacked was finishing. That's the only thing that we lacked. We created chances. We were dominant. We were really good in the final third. And the only thing that we couldn't do was finish our dinner. And in the second half, it was Arteta's lack of substitutional awareness that meant we didn't end up taking the game to Villa more than we should have done. But the first half performance was good, and that was because of the lineup. Well, again, that, that, going back to his, uh, I mean, his tactical uh, tactical analysis in terms of substitutions, including that substitution of Odegaard, which sure. I'll never understand. Oh, uh, oh well, he when he took him off, when quite simply he was the best player of, of us on the pitch. He when he needed the goal, yep. He was injured. Oh, he was injured. Okay, fair. If he was if he was injured, then uh, so be it. But I mean, the the like for like exchange of of Emil Smith Rowe didn't exactly prove uh, worthy of any. No, I sort agree of, with you, one hundred percent. It should have been Vieira than Smith Rowe because if you bring in yeah. a Berdegar, bring on a creator, and Smith Rowe's not a creator; he's a driver. So, I agree with you there. <coughs> well, I'm not coming to you, by the way. I feel like I'm really like gunning for you. It's only because I'm a conscious of the time and b. It's the whole select the I hate that word. That word really, really gets on my nerves because to say someone is arrogant 
it's it's like it's to say yes they they like they know best and they're unquestionable and and all this but Arteta this season has admitted his mistakes and he's shown that by uh, the Kivio Well, he admitted it yesterday. Yesterday he was he was strong wrong and strong in in, in yeah. what he in what he had if to say. If you go into a press to conference and ask the manager after he's made after we've lost a game that's cost us in the title race and you say why did you start this player over this player you aren't going to get a good you aren't going to get a good answer like it's just not going to happen like <laughs> but a fair play I just you know I, I I just think that in that situation you know. I, I don't blame Arteta for for being frustrated, being annoyed, being short, being snappy. He just lost a game, which ultimately could have really damaging effects on our title race. Throughout the course of this season, I think it was uh, TJ. I was on. Was it TJ or Benny? One of the two raised the point that look at Ten Hag. Ten Hag is an arrogant manager because he can never ever take responsibility for the issues of Manchester United. He always has to turn around and either walk out of a press conference or turn around and say, well, we deserve to beat Arsenal. We deserve to do this. Had the referee done this? No, take ownership for the mistakes that you've made as a manager this season. Like Some silly, genuinely silly selections, some really strange decision-making in terms of his lineups. And he ultimately hasn't improved players at that club at all. He stumbled upon someone like Kobe Mainu who's come into that team and he's improved to a degree, but I don't think necessarily he's any better than who he was when he first came on the scene. There, no one's improved under Ten Hag. It's coming from an outside perspective, so maybe I'm being naive. But Arteta has earned the right, I think, to be how he is, to pick the teams that he picks. And like he, he, we talk about, he started Jesus at striker. Yep, Jesus started against Luton, scored, got an assist. He started against um, Brighton in the two 0 win. He got a goal in that game. He started against Nottingham Forest, got a goal and assist in that game. He started at Sevilla, got a goal and assist in that game this season. Like. He's done well when he started in some games, but not in all games. But we needed to change things because we're burning ourselves out. And if we don't change things, we are going to completely fall apart come come the, the last few games of the season. Right. Well, again, that that, that goes to show that his seven hundred million that he's that he spent. Now, again, I know it's a reduced rate. We've already pointed that out. Sure. Uh, but he hasn't spent it wisely. He hasn't. He, he his his team planning is not exactly uh, of, of of a stellar rate that needs to uh, that that is of the elite managers. But for people to call him elite managers, is behind the league of... leaders, Elliot. Like, and we've and we invested thirty eight million pounds in a player that we've not had all season. Understood. I mean, Timber was uh, is uh, is something that you can uh, account for uh, absolutely. But the fact of the matter is, I mean. <clears throat> Kai Havertz is a forward now. Why is he playing midfield? Uh, it's 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 as Zinchenko has been found that as being a left back. Why is he playing in this match? It should have been Tommy Asu. He started against um, Man City in the one 0 win. He started. He came off. Sorry, he started in the Liverpool result that we won. He uh, came off the bench against Bayern and helped us to get back into that game. And obviously, we scored in, in that second half. He started at Brighton when we won three 0 There are reasons why Zinchenko played. Zinchenko didn't have a good game. You know, I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend that he didn't have a good game. But if you, there is no reason for there to be not a single option as to why he didn't start this game. You know, he should have been brought off sooner. I'm not. That's you know, I'm absolutely with you. Should have come off sooner. But if we're saying that it's arrogant to start a player that started in the game against the, the biggest team that we've played all season against City, which we won, we go to Brighton, have one of our, one of our most successful away performances, and keep a clean sheet. He started that game. You know, he started. He's trusted to come off the bench against Bayern and help us get back into the tie. I don't think it's arrogant to choose that player. I think that there's evidence to suggest why he chose that player. Well, again, it's Diaby. It's, we're talking about Diaby and Leon Bailey, two of the fastest winners in the Premier League, for crying out loud. You're, mm. And you're putting and you're putting Zinchenko there for uh, you're 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 a glutton for punishment. Then you're just asking for trouble. You're 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 looking for it with a flashlight in the light. It's just come on, come on. It it it. it. And that's where we we lose trust with this manager. It's been five years. It's only been one trophy. I understand the improvement that he's oh, gone through. I'm so... I, 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 know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Because we've gone so far. Look what I we've done. I understand you've gone so far, Tom, but the fact of the matter is, has he taken as far as far as he can, as he can go? People that's were saying the question. that when he finished fifth and then he went and challenged for a title. Like, I understood, that's, that's understood, Tom. But at these at these squeaky bum moments, he's 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 thinks that he's the smartest man in the room when he's not. Clearly, I, I you get, get a man, you get point. a man in, you get a man in like Unai Emery into that into that into that room, and he said, "You know what? These guys embarrass me. I am going to make an example of them." And he did. And they played Thursday, and we played on the Tuesday night. So there when are no Emery left there are no this club. Club. when Unai Emery left this club. 
he left a fractured dressing room which then we had to bring in a replacement who'd never been in a managerial position for not only to rip up the floorboards and completely rebuild the side, but to take this team to a place it's not been in in two decades. That's what Uno Emery did. Uno Emery is a tactically astute, clever manager, and he will win you certain games. He's an excellent cup coach, and that's why he's been so successful in the Europa League. And he could be successful in the UEFA Conference League with Aston Villa. And he has taken a club that, let's not be real, let's not let's pretend that Villa haven't done some very good things in the market and they've brought in some very good players and they've got some very good players like Watkins, etc. But he has done a good job there. But let's not pretend that Unai Emery would have done the same thing that Arteta has done with Arsenal if he was given more time. because he Well, wouldn't. if he had the same budget as uh, as uh, Mr. Arteta, who knows? Because he never got, know, did get that budget. We never did get those problems. signing in Nicolas Pepe, and we had players like Aubameyang and Lacazette who scored goals for fun in the right team. But you can recognise the fact that they weren't they weren't working, that they weren't doing what needed to be done. And we and Arteta ripped up the floorboards and changed it. Uh, Unai Emery had loads of players come in the club that, that he was head coach for. People say he wasn't backed. He was backed. He was backed with our record signing. You know, but he wanted Zaha. So what if you wanted Zaha? You got the next best thing, which at the time was a player who'd scored 20-plus go, uh, goals in Liga, scored more goals than Zaha in the same season. And you didn't use him from the off. Arteta didn't use him because he wasn't his player. Didn't sign him. But you can't sign a player for 72 million under your ownership and then not use him. And then he blew the Champions League race by rotating everybody out for the Europa League, which he then played one of the worst finals we've ever seen in Arsenal's history. So I, the Unai Emery thing is, I, I, there's a reason why he's not Arsenal manager anymore. It's a very big reason why he's not Arsenal manager anymore. And that's because we were never going to get to the heights that we've got to under Arteta with him as manager. Fair enough. I mean, uh, the only thing that I would add is... I say this uh, all with love, Elliot, by the way. <laughs> I know, I know. We've gone long. We've gone long. This is my last point. My last point is, if, if our, I mean, my, my, uh, two things. Number one, my full trust isn't behind Arteta. I think he should his, his contract should not be extended. I know for the fact that, you know, oh, players want to know who their manager is for the, for the, for the foreseeable future. I understand that. But he hasn't proven to me that he is uh, he is warranted a new contract with this club. I think he should be given a final year in which he can uh, justify himself to winning some some trophy. One, I don't care what it was, Carabao or Champions League or League or FA Cup. But uh, he hasn't warranted me, uh, me to give him a new contract until Eric he does Ten the business there. Has a new contract to Manchester United. He's got, he had a new contract. Who? Eric Ten Hag. Do you think Eric Ten Hag deserves a new contract to Man United? I don't think he does, no. But he won the Carabao Cup. He won the Carabao Cup, yes. But he, well, uh, listen, Arteta won the FA Cup. Yeah, but he won the Carabao Cup last season, did he not? Yeah, he did. But so, again, trophy for trophy, I understand. But the fact the, the, the fact of the matter is Arteta has not proven himself worthy of a, a totally new five-year or uh, unlimited contracting deal because he I'm is... Not, I don't think Arsenal are offering him that. I think it'll be a three-year deal. Uh, I, I, I hope so. If, if if at all, but I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily do it until he shows me in this final year that he's worthy of that contract. Quite simply, I, and what? So he has to win a Premier League or a Champions League title to prove that to you? No, I said trophy, any trophy. I said Carabao. Trophy. I said Epic. You I just say said any trophy, and then said you wouldn't renew at Eric Ten Hag despite the fact that he won the Carabao Cup. I would not renew Eric Ten Hag because, again, I, I know for a fact that Eric Ten Hag is, is, is he's not going to bring his, his club forward, quite simply, and uh, it, and his results don't justify it. I mean, uh, Arteta's on that on that balance, uh, on that on that on that tightrope where you know he's he is he has definitely improved the club, but he hasn't he hasn't won the trophies necessary to to you know have a carte blanche contract. I, don't I would I would suggest him. a guy like Zinazine Sudan for, for my for my estimation, a man who's a proven I, winner. I don't think anyone's asking for a carte blanche contract for Arteta. I think everyone's saying that the next contract's three year contract, and in that contract he has to deliver a Premier League title or a Champions League title. And if he doesn't deliver a Premier if he doesn't deliver a Premier League title or a Champions League title, then he's probably taken the club as far as he can go. But in this current contract that he's got, he's taken Arsenal into successive title challenges against the biggest monster the Premier League has ever seen, and has come exceptionally close last season, and could even come even close this season. Who knows what's still going to happen with games that we've got left? He's taken us into the first Champions League that we've ever had in seven whatever years it is been and he's got us to a quarter final which we haven't achieved in 14 years against a Bayern Munich side that have notoriously beaten us in historical records and we're looking now at potentially going to Munich with the opportunity to go to a semi-final which we've not achieved since 
I think what since Manchester United you know, knocked us out in in the late noughties. So I'm looking at that and thinking I don't know what more he could do to justify extension because he's only sending us in one direction. Last last <laughs> point because I feel so bad for the listeners that are waiting for this call. I, I mean, listen, listen, I, I listen. If there's one guy who uh, who could step in his place, I would say Zinedine Zidane. But at the end of the day, because uh, he's a proven winner. Uh, despite the fact that he he was at Real Madrid, but he's a proven winner. He can come in and literally, you know, take us uh, to that final place where we are, uh, where we have, uh, where we've taken things forward. But again, Arteta has improved us. Let's see what happens in the next coming days and weeks. And uh, if he proves me wrong, I'll be the first to hold my hands up and say, "Hey, you know what?" He, but again, uh, I, I am only only asking the people out there to say, don't have blind faith in Mikel Arteta. No, Let I, I the results should. prove themselves. I think that's absolutely fair. We can come to an agreement. You shouldn't have blind faith in anyone. You know, um, you should be able to justify the positions that you have. And look, I think we've gone a good back and forth about it. But Elliot's genuinely is a pleasure. And I say everything I say with love. And uh, I'm glad we can have a good chat about it. Love is always received from you, Tom. And well <laughs> spoken again. So. Thanks, <laughs> pal. No, of course. Cheers, I'll speak to you soon. Have a good one. Bye. Cheers. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> we're already at five to seven. Oh, this is going to... I'm meant to be cooking a chicken pie tonight, and I think that's going to get delayed for some reason. Right. Uh, let's go to Nikolai, who's been very patient, is up next. Uh, Nikolai, how are you doing, mate? You good, Joel? Doing good. How are you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not, not bad, mate. Not bad. Uh, right. What do you want to say? All right. Uh I'll keep it short and hopefully you can get cooking. I appreciate uh, that. <laughs> I know. So I have a point, two points to make. The first one, you know, I love the conversation you had with Elliot, but I don't see a reason why you would risk not having a manager. So, the, you know, you, you can fire a manager, just pay him to go. And don't worry about it. It's not like it's a player. It's You just have... You, you ask for trouble if you... I'll just give you one year. What good comes from that decision is just beyond me. So, you know, he had great results in his four-year run. He deserves a contract. Um, and if you don't like him all of a damn sudden in two years, exactly. sack him. That's, it's just a reasonable thing to do, to not care about, you know, is he going to renew... Uh, it's somebody going to steal him from us, whatever. Just give him the contract. You paid other people. You should just don't create a problem for yourself. And then the second point, you know, he's been here for four years and he had four, like the actual transfer windows, like the summer ones. Typically, if you just apply logic, you know, you will probably sign four players that are at a level a year, you know, mm. probably some fill-ups and things like that, but if you have a 75% hit rate with those, and that's pretty high hit rate, that's yeah. 12 players, 12, because he, how many players he has that he plays now that he yeah. that he had when he started? I think it's Bukayo, and I think it's Gabi, Martinelli, that is. And that's it, you know, and, and I'm not, you know, Saliba, I'm not saying anything. Sure. Well, yeah, but it was a known quantity back then to a degree. Sure. But yeah, obviously, so, he didn't sign him. That's why I, I bring him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you would have four transfer windows. That's 12 players if you sign four a year and only three of them are amazing. And that's amazing 75% hit chance. So you have, what, 12 plus 14, up to 15 players that are yours and you feel are amazing and you hit them right. You are not winning a title with 15 players. You're just not. So just even if you break it down... Anyway, not the Premier League title. Well, any title... <laughs> well, no, I'd argue with, that you could probably win the Bundesliga or Serie A or Liga or with, with 15... Competent players. You think? You think if you are? I think if Bayern Munich trying... have fifteen competent players, they they can win it this season. They they've been lacking. By Leverkusen's team, if you look at it, you know that team that has been so successful, their best players on that side have stayed fit. You know your your Frimpongs, your Grimaldos, yeah, your Jackers, they've stayed fit. You that's know. fine, but 
the, the point is you either have to be amazingly lucky with injuries or you don't have to play in many competitions or, you know, there are caveats to this. So even from that perspective, I mean, he has amazing progress. I mean, it was just, come on, we're doing great in the Champions League, better than we expected. Villa just, you know, there were choices that we made, which I don't agree with, but I think we're still in it. And, and even if we, you know, come short, I think that's progress. And we need one extra window just by just mathematics <laughs> to have a, a squad that he finally trusts. Because let's be honest, he doesn't trust his bench, most of them. So, okay. yeah. So that's, that's the reason why he doesn't rotate as much as we like. And then we overplay people and then an injury and then you're done. So mm. that was everything I wanted to say. No, no I think you raised your time. the point well. No, I, I agree on the point about the contract. You know, uh, I, I know where Elliot's coming from in terms of like not being able to necessarily trust to, to extend and let's just go into the final year and see how it goes. You know, I, I see the other side of it being, you know, you want to give players encouragement in a summer transfer window that they know that the manager is going to be here. And there's always, it's, as you said rightly, it's, they're not like players. You know, you're not selling them. You don't have to keep hold of them. If, if, they're, if they're failing, if Arteta suddenly goes down the complete other, opposite direction and we go, you know, out of the top four, we're suddenly falling out the title race, we're falling out of top four contention, you can sack the guy, you know. So it's, it's, it's different. So I see that. And then on the other point of like the squad, again, we have 15 to 16 players i think that arteta thinks these are the guys you know that can take us then we'll continue next season and then there's nine to ten that we look at and go yeah they could go and that counts players like emil smith Rowe. it counts players like uh reese nelson and eddie and and aaron ramsdale of course as well you know these are players that he's not necessarily 100 percent perhaps sold on we gave takira tomiyasu a contract extension but that contract extension was one year extra so that's that I mean, that in itself probably shows us that we're not necessarily even uh, content of him being a long-term option for us as well. So, yeah, squad-wise, there is more to be done. And when you're up against City and you look at their squad, that shows you the challenge that you've got. And we're two points behind that squad at the moment, you know, with a ridiculously good defensive record this season. And uh, had we put the ball in the bloody net yesterday in the first half like we should have done, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. But, Nikolai, thank you so much, mate, for your time. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I think you're being patient as well. That's very kind. Lovely stuff. Um, speaking of being patient, I've got three more listeners. Please hang on, guys. I'm going to get you all on, I promise. Uh, next up is, I'm excited to get this person on because A, they're going to tell me how I pronounce their name correctly because I know I've mugged them off in the chat box before. Chandney, tell me. Hello. Perfect. Tell me how to, was that good? Yes. Yeah, it was, it was quite close. Good Take job. that as a win, Chandney. Yeah, yeah you Thanks. should, you should. Tell me what you like to say, please. And uh, yeah, apologies for the, the wait as well. Uh, no problem. I actually joined um, an hour into the call in show because I had work. And um, uh, for a change, I was grateful it was Monday because I was just throwing myself into work and trying to cut out all the noise. Um, you but, thought you'd um, do the exact opposite of that and jump onto an Arsenal phone in show. Yeah. I, yes, I see because I, yeah. I also <laughs> need therapy, you know, and uh, there's nothing better than uh, two hours of therapy, like people were saying on the Indeed. chat box. Indeed. Um, but um, I have to say that my feelings over the game has been changing every hour. Um, mm. I have directed anger towards players, towards the manager, then calmed down, felt bad for them. Um, I've gone through all the emotions. So mm. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to focus on how do we fix it? Uh, because um, I, I, I think in my head, I've reached that point where we can't change the fact that we've lost three points. We can't change the fact that the second half, somehow the team didn't turn up. Um, there are, I think it was a mixture of uh, mentality, tired legs, uh, maybe wrong substitutions uh, from Arteta and also the fact that um, Odegaard got injured. So my first concern is I hope to see him in Munich. It's very important. Mm. And secondly, we have to we have to make a statement in Munich because uh, I was just checking the table and I noticed that week 32 last year was when the Southampton draw happened. And uh, funnily enough, I don't feel as dead inside as I felt last year after that Southampton game. So, uh, and the main reason for that is because we are two points behind. And I just find it hard to believe, even though it's City, that this title race is over. Because, um, let me put a scenario. If, 
if Arsenal make it past Bayern hmm. and City make it past Real Madrid, we're going to face each other twice in the semi-finals. Yeah, yeah. And let's say that Liverpool don't win against Atlanta, hmm. then who are the favourites? I'd still say City, personally. Yeah. Who are just because I think favorites? they're a machine, you know, that just know how to win every game. You know. I, I don't blame you. Uh, I mm. don't blame you for saying that. But I would say the second favourites are Liverpool. Yeah, and, you'd probably be right. Sure. And uh, and let are we sitting here saying that Liverpool have a chance today? I think Liverpool look a little more in a difficult spot than Arsenal right now. Let's be honest. Because mm. 3-0 midweek, losing to Crystal Palace. Uh, I'm not trying to sugarcoat our loss, but losing mm. to a good... Oh, I wouldn't Aston trade places. Team. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't trade places with them. So, I think there's still some twists to be had. I'm not saying that Arsenal is going to win the league. I think there's a lot of reflection to be done uh, on how to go next, uh, how the squad should look like, uh, which players have a spot in the way our team is going to evolve. I personally think Arteta should be given another contract. I am with you there. Two or three years, an extension is not a reward. It is just to give one more chance to see out his goal. And yeah. I think the players buy into it. So whether we as fans agree with it or not, if the if the players are still with the manager, and uh, I and I think they are, uh, we just need to show more faith because we don't know what's going on behind uh, what happens on the pitch. So um, yeah, I've waddled around a lot, but how to fix uh, this I'm, is that makes sense. yeah, we just need to uh, give it our best shot against Munich. And go and beat Wolves because everyone is waiting for us to have this moment. And we had it yesterday. Uh, I knew that we were not going to win all the remaining games when that international break was going on. Uh, I just didn't want that loss to come against City or against Spurs, let alone United. Uh, we didn't lose to City, but we lost to Villa. So let's not lose to anyone else. And we'll see where... Yeah. It all ends if it's. It sounds simple, doesn't it? When you put it like that. <laughs> because it just, is that just simple. don't lose. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. I wouldn't trade places with Liverpool at all. Um, and I think that the whole like you know, Bayern's next, then it's Wolves. There's something to be said. You know, I, I understand why Arteta takes this what game by game approach. But I think that perhaps we can look back at the end of the season and say, well, maybe the game-by-game approach doesn't necessarily always work because I think sometimes Mm -hmm. you do have to plan more so for the long term. So you can plan rotation. You can plan when you're going to make certain changes. And yes, injuries crop up, which change those plans. But there is perhaps some naivety in just looking at the only game ahead of you. And I know that Elliot on the Arsenal Vision will be screaming, saying trap game that that Villa was. Um, But I, I do think there is something to making sure that you're doing both. I think you have to take into account both. Focus on the next game, yes, but be aware of what's coming and how you're going to plan for that as well. And I think we could have done more this season rotation-wise. Um, 100%. Yeah. I, and I do think that yesterday, some of the substitutions uh, and the changes, to me, it felt like Zinchenko started in the starting lineup because uh, Tomiyasu or Kivior might come in the lineup on Wednesday. Um, to me, yeah. that's what it felt like. And mm. it, it was him trying to rotate, but it didn't all mesh well in the end. Uh, and as a manager, you can put out a lineup, but then the players can let you down. Uh, or mm. he, he must have overthought is where I'm at at the moment. I think the players let him down in the first half. I mean, not, not in sense of like the performance, but mm-hmm. finishing, you know. Yes. We should like, have been clear at halftime. Uh, Trossard's miss, I... I cannot get over it. Uh, and I think in a way we should also be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, uh, I think our finishing was poor even against Bayern uh, before they came back into the game. Uh, I think mm. the first 10, 15 minutes till Saka's goal, we were scintillating. And then yeah, Ben White only, had that chance, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, if only Ben White had put it in. But I can't even blame the guy because he's been an excellent player for us since the turn of the year. So yeah. it's difficult and I know we want to dissect everything, get answers. Uh, I know a lot of callers were talking about Arteta's press conference, uh, about uh, a lack of answering for some of the questions. Yeah. He's, he's not naive. He's played this I can't blame the guy. I really yeah. can't. Yeah. 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 If someone we asked me after if I was manager, like, why did you pick this guy? Because I can. That's why. Because <laughs> I yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but all I'll say is we need to... Um, not try and get all the answers, but wait for six more games, 
seven if we include Bayern. Hopefully mm. nine if we go past them. Hopefully or ten. ten. Yeah, or ten. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I'm trying not to be overtly uh, optimistic, but um, indeed, so I understand yeah. that. Uh, Chandni, thank you so much uh, for coming on. I'm glad I've nearly mastered the pronunciation of your name as well. Um, no, you're getting better with each time, Tom. So next yeah. uh, Colin show. It's like uh, our tennis tenure at Arsenal. Yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, it's progression yes. is what it is. Yes, progression. <laughs> yes. Trust Thank you. Process. So nice to speak to you and put a face to the name. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Tom. See you later. Uh, lovely stuff. Um, we got two to go, and then we're nearly done. And and you have to give props to, to our last uh, callers, of course, and and our recent ones as well for being so patient. Uh, we have got Fala, and then we got Leo, and then we'll be done. Fala, how are you doing, mate? You good? You well? I'm good, but uh, Arsenal has uh, has really disappointed me. Yeah, actually, my head's gone. <laughs> you and me both, mate. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, I was gutted. Gut, absolutely gutted yesterday, indeed. Tell me what you yes. want to talk about. Um, I think we need a manager change. Um, oh, uh, he's done that, it. He's gone there. Yes. He's dropped the bomb. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Why do we need a manager change and who who are you wanting? The who? I don't know. But we oh, you see, just now, need a manager We're going to stop there. This is where we're going to yes. stop, Fala. So for me, okay. uh-huh. and I say this again, like I said to Elliot, I say this with all the love in the world, right? But for me, uh-huh. if you don't have a solution... I, I struggle ever to get on board with a point of view, if you know what I mean. It's it's really hard to have a conversation about, you know, I want to see change because I think change is the answer. But then if you don't know who has to come in, how can you think that that is the best avenue to progress? Does that make sense? Makes sense. But yeah, I can clearly see I'm not trying thing. to convince you to change your mind necessarily. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm just saying like, I don't... If, if there's two pathways, right? One of those pathways is stay with Arteta into next season, see what he does. For you, you're currently on the other pathway, which is where you think yeah, that yeah, a yeah. change of manager for next season, see what they can do. But the issue is, yeah. that if I'm if I'm looking at those two pathways, I can see the right sided pathway. You know, there's no there's no shadow, there's no fog. I know where we're going. I know what we've done. I know that all we've done is move forwards. The other pathway to you right now you're telling me is covered in shadow covered in fog you don't know who's there you don't know who's taking it forward and what i can't do is i can't get on board why i'd rather walk down that path than the one that i can see does that make mm-hmm. sense it's okay but um to me it's very clear what okay. Ashton has shown me hmm. is a manager that can't cross the line so if i'm choosing this path i'm like guaranteeing in my mind we won't reach that objective. But maybe if I d- decide to change, we might mm. achieve that objective. Because right now, okay. I think Arsenal and, uh, and Arteta, they are, I think, uh, they're, they're satisfied w- with what they see. Supposing, um, really? hypothetically, Arsenal win, mm. no, lose all those games, the remaining six games, Arteta would still manage Arsenal coming the next season. So his mm. position, is safe, is secure. Whatever happens, he'll remain the manager. There's no pressure. And I don't really I don't there's know no when that pressure will become. I, I, the no the hypothetical scenario achieve. you gave of like if we lose yes. the next six games, he stays. It's a difficult one to get on board because I just don't think there's a world in which that happens. If it does, yeah, we can have a conversation then. Yeah, but like, I, I see where your head's I see why you say it. Yes. Yes. Sure. Because I see um Arteta is under no pressure. Whatever he does. He'll still remain the manager. And um, so if he finishes eighth he, next season, you think I, he'd still stay in the job? I'm saying this season, no matter okay. what happens from now and onwards, he'll still manage, meaning there's no pressure for him to deli- to deliver. I'm at that point where I've seen that supposing next season you have mm. the team to remain title challengers. Now, if you remain title challengers next season. The club won't have an uh, an excuse to to sack him, but I want Arsenal to win the league or to win the Champions mm. League. Mm. And in my head, Arteta is not in that picture. Well, the only reason we've got a chance see... of doing either is because I, of Arteta. I, yes, yes, I don't believe he has that that capability, that capacity. You know, you know, we are talking Pep. Pep is a perfectionist. 
Mm-hmm. We are looking for a perfectionist. Mm. You know, and I don't think a stator is that is is a perfectionist. Here we are talking. I think if it was any other any other manager, it's okay to keep up to keep a stator. But we are talking Pep. Klopp is leaving, but yeah. Pep is still there. That's Party still a challenge. I, I, I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. That one, I, I, I don't know. I, I think Supposing he'll be gone he, after next season. I think he'll leave. Yes, I think that yes. if the if the chickens come home to roost, as the phrase goes, next year, um, <laughs> which could very much if happen. That happens, yeah. If that happens, yeah, that happens. Well and good, but at mm. the moment, we need a perfectionist. We want our I, own I, I think Alex Arteta is, Ferguson. I think Arteta is kind of one of those. No, from, no, from no, 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 no. He is. I think that he is. Yes, 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 yes. I, I yes. think that he is. I think well, that's that he is my a player. opinion. No, of course. And that's you're entitled to it. Yes, I'm yes, also yes, entitled yes. to respond to it. And the reason why I think that he is a perfectionist is because he is so meticulous in what he does. And he's willing to take such huge risks in the sense of like, if you've your club captain is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who scored untold numbers of goals since he arrived and he's gone nope don't care don't care who you are you're not abiding to what this philosophy is to the principles to the standards that we hold here and you're gone and instead we're going to bring in players that do follow those standards so i think actually that that is the sign of something of a perfectionist because he's not willing to have anyone fall out of line anyone fall out of what the expectations of him as a manager are and if it, if anyone does he's willing to to, to, to pay the biggest financial price for that to happen. And that has led us to build a squad that has now put us into a position where your expectations, Fallar, are that this team does need to win a Champions League, does need to win a Premier League. And we're here because of what Arteta has done. Now, what I'm saying mm-hmm. is that I think Arteta has earned the right to see if in this next contract, if what he has built will deliver that. And I don't think there is a better option out there than to go and see that because I think we have built ourselves into a position where ultimately we can now see if this team, if this club under this manager can win a Champions League or a Premier League. And if he can't, it's because that is as far as he can take us. But I don't think there is enough evidence at the moment to suggest against what we're up against that that is the case. No, I, that's your opinion. I that's, cannot... Yeah, of course it is. Yes, of course it's my yes, opinion. Yeah. Yes, I cannot disagree. You know, um, as, to me, He's, he's not that Xavi Alonso. You know, prior to this season, I had no knowledge yeah. of Xavi Alonso. Mm. But he has just clicked it. Just click, clicked it. As that, I don't think that he has... And you're chasing Pep. You know, um, back then when the Fagi days came, Wenger came and tried to um, uh, overtake uh, 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 what we call Pep, uh, Sir Alex oh, Ferguson. Just... Mm. Yes, but we overstayed with Wenger. Yeah, we did. You see, I, I agree. You did overstay with, with well, Wenger. We were regressing under Wenger. We were regressing. Yes, but, but we're not regressing um, under Arteta. We're you're you're, you're not regressing, but you are not overcoming. You know, you know that in that era, Chelsea decided to go for Mourinho, mm. and he became he, he came back. To, he came into that equation. We are now in the Pep era, Pep Club era. And I don't think no, I just, just the Pep era. There's no Pep Clop era. We, we, Pep's won five of the Pep six era. trophies. <laughs> Let, let's no call Pep it the Pep era. era. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Pep. <laughs> let's now yeah. call it the Pep era. Now, who is who is that? I don't believe Arteta is that manager to Pip. I to think Pep. we have. Eh? Yeah, to Pip. Sorry, no, that's, the <laughs> that's, yeah, 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 that, that's the challenge. Yeah, that's the challenge. No, that's the challenge, and the, that's the I challenge. Think he, I think that he has come closest. He's he has obviously taken us as close as and closer than I think anyone ever thought that he would. Yes, do. but he and, has and every my, year that he's been here, we've gone, we've got closer. Yeah, Tom, Arteta has surpassed everyone's expectation, even mine. Yeah, absolutely. He has surpassed him. but I want to win the Premier League under the Pep era management, and I don't believe Arteta is the one. We have he's tried top four before. We choked. Last season, we tried to win the Premier League. We choked. This season, we are choking. It's no coincidence we are choking at the at the tail end. See, I think that's it's just no coincidence. Because I think eh? two seasons ago, two seasons ago when we finished eighth the season before, had no European football, we were trying to get back into European football. We overachieved by nearly getting into top four. The season after that, 
We aimed at get back into the Champions League. We overachieved by competing for the title. This season, the aim was compete for the title again, which we have done. and We are competing for the title. If the expectation oh. is to win the title, I mean, who was your favourites at the start of the season for the league? Um, my favourites um, yeah. um, was City. The start of August, who would you have said? If I'd have said to you, who are your favourites for the title? I would have said City. Right. And so, therefore... I would have said City were, were their favourites. Now... Absolutely. So, your uh, standards are, uh, if Arteta doesn't overachieve and win the league, then he has to go. You know, there's something. It's 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 you have to apply context. Mm. The favourites were City. Yeah. Just the same way at the start of the season, by Munich were favourites to win the league. Yeah. True. Uh, by Leverkusen appointed Xavi Alonso. No one expected him to to perform. In the 2022, way he performed. they appointed him. Yeah. No one ex- no, at the start of this season. No one expected Xavi Alonso to perform. How he uh, how he's performing, no, but he's didn't. he's not satisfied with just challenging or let's see what's next. They are perfectionists. They are looking for the. I don't think they have lost a game this season. No, they've not. No, no they've not. They haven't, and that's what it takes to beat someone such as Pep. You see, we are searching for perfection. Well, I, I see what you're saying. And if I we just find don't, that perfection, just don't think it's possible. Believe you me. Believe you me, if you find that perfectionist, we um, that manager will be like they will now have that error. And I, I, I don't manager. think. I don't, do you think Xabi <laughs> Alonso wins the league with Arsenal this season? Then maybe I don't know. I didn't believe he would win it by Leverkusen. I don't know. Well, you know that's what and, I'm saying. You know, but you're, what you're yeah. saying is that Xabi Alonso yes. wasn't satisfied with, by the way, Europa League football last season is what they qualified for. Um, he wasn't yeah. satisfied with that. And also yeah. has taken on the league this season. But all, all he's done is, is he's brought in players and he's he's established a style of play and, and they've gone unbeaten this season. They've scored some very late goals. They've had some late turnarounds, which have obviously led them there. But they've played some brilliant football in a system that suit them. Meanwhile, Bayern Munich have been the poorest they've been for yeah. as long as I can remember. Whereas City have not been as poor as they have ever been as far as I can remember. <laughs> I know, that's I know, the difference. I know, I know. You know, that's the yes. difference. Bayern Munich... Uh, my Man City are not having a Bayern Munich season, are they? That's the difference but between you, the two. You know, you know um, all I can say, the problem with Arteta, it's it's like, it's something that happens. It has happened now. I don't, let me not be a prophet of doom, but it's something that has happened. We tried to aim for the top four. We didn't manage it. We choked at the mm. end. We tried to win the league that season. We choked at the end. But that's, that's now a trying... viewpoint. That's what you're viewing it as. Yes, yes. Because you're now trying in to... the season we yeah. didn't finish fourth, the aim was to get back into Europe, which we did. And we actually went further than people expected because they no one thought Arsenal were going to be in the top four that season. So when they nearly did, they called it choking. The following season, everyone was like, well, Arsenal's goal has got to get, in, get back into the Champions League. We did that. But not only did we do that, but we challenged Manchester City for the title. You know, so you're viewing it with a different lens, which you're entitled to do, but I'm also entitled yes, to point out the fact that actually those seasons were overachievements and they went further than people expected us to do. You see, it's like I'm trying to push. I want Arsteta to push harder. Mm. I don't think... By when we are him. aiming... Yes, yes. No, when we are... Yeah? <laughs> you said you're trying to push him the, further, but I don't get I want, it. I want Arsteta to win that league. I don't know... <laughs> But I, I can't believe see you want him to win the league. I, I believe I, that. I know I there are others out there that don't want him to, but I believe that you genuinely yeah. do want him to win the league. Yeah. Yes, I want him to win because I'm not. My only interest is Arsenal. It's not Arteta. It's not. I'm not conflicted. To me, my only interest is Arsenal. And now where we have reached, Great. we need a perfectionist because Pep is. That, that, that's what we need, and I don't think Arteta is that. That's my point. Fair enough. We will agree to disagree, fella. But we've had a thank good conversation. I think we can agree on that. Thank you, thank um, you, so thank you for your time, mate. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, massive love to fella. Thank you for being patient, of course. And finally, Leo. How are you, Leo? Patient, as always. 
<laughs> very, very good. Yeah, very good. Honestly, I, I wanted to say some stuff, but you had so many great guests, man. Everybody said everything. So I just stuck around for the chicken pie recipe, honestly. Just no. for the chicken pie recipe, was that it? No, no, no. I didn't want to chicken end, didn't in want a pie. That's it. <laughs> Literally, you just put the chicken, that's it? No, there is a lot more to it than that, but uh, I'm not going to bore you with a Jamie Oliver style recipe. It's not to be fair, it's just my recipe. So, you know, I, I'm not going to get into tomato conversation. Do you know what sucked about Sunday so much was that I changed my Twitter handle to include a tomato after the Sunday morning's that. conversation and no one said a thing. No one said I anything. To say it. I wanted right. to say well, no just that, honestly. <laughs> honestly, yeah, I wanted to say it. I was no too busy knew. losing, so no one ever mentioned it, but it was fine. Yeah. It is what yeah. it is. Anyway, tell just the last five minutes of the show, you've heard, obviously, a lot of what everyone else has had to say. So just tell me where your head's at. I've heard people say that this didn't didn't hurt as much as last season. I don't know. I was absolutely heartbroken, and I've, I've never been this dismal and abysmal in my whole life than yesterday. Like yesterday. Was it yesterday? It was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. And I don't know, last season, I never for a second believed we were going to win the league, so it didn't hurt as much. And this season, I didn't believe that. But when you see that there's like six games left and you think that, yeah, of course, we haven't lost a single time this year, you, you always feel like maybe, just maybe. And just the fact that it was at the Emirates, that it was to Emory and with the performance we put up in the second half it it it, it was it was painful honestly yeah mm. um yeah. i wanted to say that i tell in obviously yeah mm. i wanted to say that say obviously uh, like, obviously yeah. <laughs> i never know these days with people you know <laughs> no like you can argue your way into saying that maybe she doesn't deserve a new contract and mm. uh, if you want to be harsh Maybe that's true. Like, I look at Chabi Alonso and I'm honestly a bit jealous of him. Very happy for Granit Xhaka, of course. Yeah, of course. Very, of course. Yeah. Very happy, but full of jealousy. 100%. 100%. Full of jealousy. Yeah. Very happy. I Liverpool wish Man City would have a season like Bayern just had. I'd love it if they did. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm just but can't wait don't. for Guardiola to just go. I don't know. Just, just yeah. go. Yeah. It, it's, it's enough. That would be yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, very happy. I, very happy that Liverpool are getting it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, look, if, if any team can win it that's not Arsenal, it's City because no one cares. No one cares if City win yeah. it. It's a proxy. It's an asterisk. If City yeah. win the league, it's like, who cares? You know, because yeah. their fans aren't a problem. Uh, I mean, there might be in a few years when they grow up because, you know, people, you've got kids down south buying Man City kits these days. But, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't, honestly, it really doesn't matter if City win the league to, to anyone. It's just frustrating if Arsenal don't because we, you know, we've put in a lot of, we've put in a lot to try and win it, you know, and uh, I, I, I believe that this team is good enough to do it, but they're showing me that perhaps maybe they're, they're still not this with the way the season's ending and I, and I don't I don't put that down to Arteta because I think Arteta is the reason why we are in a position where we're challenging we're on a position where no one thought we would be but I think that we still need some more we need more basically is what I'm saying yeah but uh, what worries me a bit like compared to last season we have been very uh, I think we are a lot more rigid this season and I think Atata is dwelling yeah. a little bit on uh, not winning the title last year. I think it's fair enough, and we've uh, grown thanks to this. But I'm afraid that if we do not win it this year, he's going to obsess about it even more. And uh, I don't know if uh, I don't know if maybe that will be mm. too much. You know, I feel like if we do win it this year, the next year I think it's going to be a lot more rotation, a lot uh, more experimenting, maybe a lot more fun football because we have seen our team being a little bit rigid especially in the first half of the season yeah maybe maybe, maybe Vieira doesn't get as many chances and smith Rowe and guys like that because uh well, maybe they leave maybe they leave so, maybe they maybe Arteta's just afraid to use them and i don't know, I don't know, but, I don't know. I mean does he have a reason to be afraid if it, if that is the reason because i just don't think they're at the level like does Vieira play for city no does smith Rowe play for city no does he play for liverpool no you know they aren't of the level required is is the is the blunt assessment of players like Vieira and Smith Rowe and Enketia and Nelson and to a degree maybe Ramsdale, although some might call that harsh. Um there are still players in this squad that will be moved on in the summer that have not been at the level. And hopefully what we do is we replace those players with players that either are certainly of the level now or certainly are of a far closer level that can have the potential to be 
of that level very soon. Um, it's a big transfer window as it always is, but yeah. I, I have a lot of positivity and optimism that it'll be a good one. Yeah, my argument against that about the level of uh, the likes of Smith Rowe and Vieira is for that we mm. haven't really seen their level in the last few years. Yeah, we haven't given them the chance. Yeah, we haven't. Yeah, they've been injured a lot, and uh, of course, you cannot control that. But I think like, then, like when Bernardo Silva moved to Man City, everybody was calling him a flop for two years. Like mm. uh, he needs time I for for the them. Oh yeah, well, and being in the title-winning sports gives you the freedom. You know, if uh, if we don't win it next year, then it's not a big problem because we just won it then. So maybe we can use Vieira more. And uh, Vieira okay. has shown a few games where he was very good last year against Brentford and against the uh, other teams, against Wolves. I don't remember exactly. I think he, there, there is a very good play in him. He just needs obviously more game time. I think uh, Zinchenko's mistakes are obviously from the, I think, uh, because of lack of game time lately. I didn't see a lot of mistakes last year. And I've seen a lot more this year when uh, he has been pushed out a little. I think uh, Kivio needs to grow on the ball. I think next year we can be a lot, a lot more better if we get a little bit more free. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I, I, yeah, maybe. I, I just think we need to be ruthless in the summer and probably move some of these players on and, and sign some better ones um, that will give us more trust. They have Arteta more trust as well in the squad, but we'll have to wait and see. Leo, I'm going to call it there. So thank you for coming on, mate. Always a pleasure. A pleasure. Bye-bye. Thanks, Leo. And that's it. That's our two and a half hour, goodness me, Monday phone-in show. Um, thank you so much, everybody that's tuned in. Thank you for everybody that's called in and uh, and contributed. We had some good conversations, good back and forth, some varieties of opinions, which is always welcome. And uh, and thank you so much for uh, for listening. Uh, I'm now going to go finally sort out this dinner <laughs> and uh, i look forward to it thank you for listening i'll be back of course with you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 a.m with rounding up all the latest arsenal information as we go into this big day against Bayern. i'm actually going to be at the arsenal training ground tomorrow for uh, the open training session hoping that the likes of martin odegaard is going to be there uh, of course you'll be able to hear and see all the latest information about that from the training ground on football.london so make sure you follow us over there thank you for listening thank you for being with us uh, stay safe stay well stay happy and respectful and as always up the Arsenal.